Octavio's puppet show is about to start at any minute. The stage is set and the lights are out. It'll be here in a moment. Turn that frown upside down. You don't need that where we're going. Well, all the planets. Octavio's puppet show. Just kidding, let me control you! <laughs> there, since you love your intro so much, let's let's end this! You've seen it! Let's go! Goodbye, everybody! It's over! It's over! <laughs> Hello! What's going on? Welcome, welcome! Welcome! Oh my god! We are so back! We are so back! We are so back! I'm sorry for peeking the mic. We're so back! Ah, I don't wanna be back! I don't wanna be back! I wanna go back! I wanna go back to Zeno Cooney! Help me! Help me! It's so hot! It's so hot in here! It's so hot! <laughs> Hey, everybody, thank you so much for the gifted memberships. Thank you, thank you also for the memberships. Thank you. We are so bad. We are so bad. But first, but first. <clears throat> Compel yourselves unto me and submit to my absolute control. Ow. Ah. Ouch. I bit my tongue. I bit my tongue. <laughs> Eh. It's bleeding. Eh. It's bleeding. I'm gonna drink the blood. Drinking the blood. Ow. It hurts. Ah. Okay. Okay. <sighs> Compel yourselves unto me and submit to my absolute control, for I. How do I say it again? <laughs> Compel yourselves unto me and submit to my absolute control for I am the puppeteer of Bounty Hunter Unit Armis of Holostar's English. <laughs> the, the opulent, octatonic, operatic puppeteer from Bounty Hunter Unit Armis of Holostar's English. My name starts with an O, ends with an O. My name is Octave. Ow! I bit my tongue again. What What is going on? What the shit? What the sheesh? Ouch. My name is Octavio. What's going on, Octopussy? All new, mid, and old Octopussy. How are you? How are you? How have you been since we last met in Xenokuni? In fact, how fast can you short? How fast can you short? Let's greet a few of you in chat right now. Let's see, see, see. Kia Jin, welcome, welcome to the stream. Uwanya, welcome, welcome. Uh, Nico, Nico, Nico Hanashi, was that Hanashi? Welcome to the stream. Ruka, hello, hello. Hajime maste, hajime maste. Sakurai, welcome, welcome to the stream. Three more, three more, three more. Devi, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Tom Nook. Tom Nook, welcome to the stream. And lastly, let's see Strawberry Bubble Zone One. Strawberry Bubble Zero One, how are you? Hajime Mashite, Watashi wa Okutabio des. Sumimasen, hi. Onegai shimas. Point o kado. Thank you for coming to the stream. Thank you for coming to the first Ock Talks ever since we went to Japan. Also, thank you for the super uh, Becca. You did it. Yippee! Thank you. We're so back. Fur fur, we are fur. We're so back. Kyosha, thanks so much for the soup as well. Bit your tongue. Someone's probably talking about you somewhere. Yeah, probably. There are probably a lot of you talking about me right now in chat, which is why I bit my tongue. How do we? How do I? How do I even talk? How do I even? 
how do I even stream anymore? I kind of forgot. Damn, kind of forgot. Uh, but hello, we so back fur fur. We are, we are Nihongo Jozu Point Tokado, Point Tokado, Fukuro, Fukuro, Atatabe. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, Uma, Uma. When you eat something good, mm, Uma. Uh, hi, hi. So, so, so this ne. So, so this ne. So this ne. <laughs> yeah, I'm pulling out the real Nihongo. Nihongo today. Uh, shit. I, I, I need to find, like, my script. I had a script for my karaoke. For my Hollow Expo karaoke. I need to find it. There's, there's stuff like, Natsuka Shizo! Utaoka! Stuff like that, right? Damn. You, you can't see me? But I'm freaking moving my hands right now. They're just under the table. You can't see. You can't see. Yago. Yago sama. So desu ne. Sugoi. Sasuga. Script? Yeah, I, ha I had a Japanese script. I had a Japanese script to tell my senpais. <laughs> uh, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. We need to talk about it later. Um... I'm not just gonna bring out Japanese <laughs> on my own, <laughs> introducing the songs and stuff. Yeah, I had a cheat sheet. I had a cheat sheet. Thank you, Manasan, for giving me a cheat sheet. Uh, I basically told my Manasan, "This is what I want to say. How do I say it? How do I say it in Japanese?" Here it is. Here it is. So I got a cheat sheet. However, I also got. I also let's talk about it later. Let's talk about it later. Uh, this is Odd Talks with Octavio. A special Xenokuni edition where all Xenokunian secrets will be revealed. The government knows I'm streaming right now, but they can't touch me from South Elysium. <laughs> that's that's one of the downsides to them hiring some someone from South Elysium, unless you're willing to brave the sands in the 50 degree Celsius heat. You won't get to me. No one can touch me. You can't kill me. You can't nab me. You can't jail me. G A O L. Can't do anything. Huh? Huh? Stop, son. At the cover. At the cover studio. Huh? I dare you. Travel to South Elysium and nab me right now. You can't. You can't. Um. J O L. G A O L. You know? Jail. Like the actual jail. Jail. Jail, but old. Is that Old English? I think that's Old English or something like that. G-A-O-L? <sighs> I hate summer. <laughs> ah. Ah. I want to go back to Xenokuni. I love being in the tail end of winter. Ah. Ah. Though I did miss... I did miss South Elysium, right? I missed my chair. I missed my PC and my computer. I missed my microphone. I missed my keyboard. I missed my... What else? What else did I miss here? I missed my table. I missed my chair. I missed my dogs, of course. I missed my cats. Uh, I did miss my AC, however... I don't miss how it's not working properly right now. Why is it not cold? The AC is on, but it's not cold. Back to reality. Yeah, back to reality! Thank you for the SC, but ugh, reality sucks. My plants, 50% uh, of my plants died. <laughs> Unfortunately, they, could, they couldn't. they It's too hot. It's too dry. What about the bidet? <laughs> I have a bidet here at home, but it's one of those hose bidets. So it's not, it's not one of those high tech bidets, unfortunately. But still, the hose is better than nothing. Um, what do you mean it's summer now? I thought it's spring now. What? It, it Oh wait, what are you talking about? South South Elysium, it's summer or rainer. It's either summer or rainer. And most of the time it's both. But this time it's just summer. But after summer, it's gonna be rainer and summer at the same time. Yeah yeah. It's spring in Japan, nice, yeah yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. Then it's, then it's gonna become summer in Japan soon. Only two seasons? Can you even say Rainer is a season? 
Aren't the seasons just summer, autumn, fall, spring, winter? Can you even say that Rainer is a season? Rainer is a is a freaking. <laughs> I mean, I love rain. I love rain, but I love cold rain. I don't like hot and humid rain, which is what we're gonna get soon. Ah, <sighs> summer and summerest, <laughs> wet and dry. El niño, la niña. <laughs> Yes, yeah, summer and just rainy. Summer and disaster. Summer and dulubio. Yeah, the floods. I mean, rain is fine. But if it turns into floods... Ah, shit. No way. I hate it. I hate it. I hate, hate it. 37 degrees Celsius in your place? Ooh. I wonder what it is in mine. Whatever it is, it feels more. It feels like 50. It feels like it's 60 right now. 60 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> Imagine going to school in this heat. You're right. I. Oh no! At least back when I w went to school, I think it was a little bit colder. Maybe, maybe. There was less. There was a little less damage on the environment. There, there was a lot, but still a little bit l lesser than now. Uh, Neku SC only has two seasons: air fryer and shower. And sometimes the shower is in the air fryer. So, um, that's, that's when it gets really, really awful. During, in, back in my day, it wasn't this hot. And also, back in my day, I was a kid. So I didn't really care. As long as I was, you know, playing basketball. Or like, you know, out with my crush or something. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to Oct Talks with Octavio. As I said, this is a special. This is a special Xenokuni edition of Oct Talks. But still, we're gonna be talking about the previous schedule, the schedule that went by, the schedule that was that came before. Then we're also going to talk about some member submitted questions. Thank you, thank you for all the questions about Xenokuni. And then we're going to be talking about next week's schedule, which is pretty, pretty spicy. Pretty spicy for a comeback schedule. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the tea spilling session today. You're right, you're right, you're right! So, let's see. Here is the previous schedule. There we go, with my incredible art. Thank you. For oh, that's Nyajime! Nyajime is still here! Huh? Yeah, Jimmy, you go, you go back, go back to your, uh, go back to your litter box. There we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy's still there. So <laughs> we got, what do you call this? Chintavio? <laughs> Chintavio. Yeah. Damn. I, I loved, I love this little, little saga during the first part of Hollow Expo where there were people posting like a 0 0.5, a 0 0.5 zoom on an iPhone or something of our, of our standees. And this is what came out of that. <laughs> uh, Gibby was really into it. Gibby sent it, has sent it multiple times to our GC, to our, uh, to our Discord. <laughs> so, oh, he was super, he was super happy about this. Um. <laughs> yeah, Gibby was so funny. Yeah, he sent it multiple times. He loved it. He loved it so much. They're so funny. So thank you for this wonderful art. Uh, uh, Dango, thank you, thank you. Let's see. Now for the week that went by, nothing really happened. <laughs> nothing really happened. Um, we got the Armasoft collab karaoke rebroadcast. And today we're going to be doing the Octox with Octavio. And therefore, we shall finally start with what the heck happened. What the heck happened? And Zinokuni. Finally, I can talk about everything in full, full detail. That was a really fast previous schedule review. <laughs> in full, full detail. Where shall we start? Hmm. Let's start from the very, very beginning. 23 years ago. <laughs> now, nah, wait, one second though. I need to go to the Octopotty. One second, I need to, I really need to go.
It's so hot! It's so hot! What is this cliffhanger, man? <laughs> Just as Keikaku. My hands! My hands! Are wet! Are wet from pee! <laughs> ah. Okay, let's start. Let's start. Where shall we start? Where shall we start? I'm dry. I don't need to play games, so I'm just drying my hands right now. Via the air. Because of all the pee. <laughs> I can say this because I'm not in my hotel anymore. <laughs> but anyway. So we were first told that we were going to Japan a few months ago, right? A few months ago. Definitely months after I got my, uh, I got the Taylor Swift ticket, right? So again, I told this story already, I think, where, you know, I had some problems with my visa. Not really a big problem with the visa, but there was a chance that I won't be able to watch Taylor Swift um, and just do Holo Expo or be able to watch both. But uh, yeah, anyway, we got the news. For the preparation for that, Taylor Swift ticket. Yeah, I got the Taylor Swift tickets. Yeah, though that's that's a Singapore edition of Octox, which is which is which is over. It is around over now. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do the Xenocuni edition now. But yeah, Mother Taylor. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, basically leading up to Japan, it's been we knew about Japan many many months ago. Many. It was so fun. Uh, even before, even before Altera and Axel went to Japan, we already knew that we were going, that there was plans for us to go. So it was super fun. It was super fun just seeing all of your thoughts on Twitter being like, Oh no. Oh, they're in Japan. Wait, is VG going to Japan? Is Armis going to Japan? <laughs> So <laughs> I, I remember messaging multiple times to our to our Discord and be like, oh shit, they're getting sus. They're getting sus about our Japan trip. They, they <laughs> they're getting suspicious that everyone's gonna go to Japan. <laughs> it's a shock no one spoiled it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, of course we weren't gonna spoil it because it was repeated over and over to us. This is a company secret. You shall not say anything about that. So if we did, then we'd probably be booted by Yago right now. We probably wouldn't have gone to Japan at all. <laughs> we get booted. So, of course, with the threat of being kicked out of the company, we're like, mm? nothing, nothing. But it was super fun. It was so fun seeing all of your like, oh no, they're going to Japan. No, they're probably not going to Japan. It's too early. Whatever. Whatever. Um, uh, I guess based on like the track record from, you know, of Tempest and the timing of when they go to Japan, ours is really early, but still, you know, it's greatly appreciated. Greatly appreciated. I, for one, did not expect that I was gonna go to Japan this year. I knew eventually I'd probably go to Japan, right? Eventually, you know, for maybe for a 3D stuff. But I was like, eh, that's probably two years away or something. But then they told us, nah, 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 nah. they're gonna go. Um, the, many, many month, months ago, Staff Son was like, can we have your passport? Can we have your passport details and stuff like that? And I was like, uh, what? Uh, okay, sure, sure. For what though? And they were like, they didn't say anything. I was like, no, 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 you know, when you need to go to Japan in the future, it's good to have the the passport, you know, early. I was like, hmm, okay, okay then. Then I was like, crap, I have Taylor Swift to go to. I hope it doesn't, I hope if we go to Japan, it doesn't freaking <laughs> land on the same day as Taylor Swift. Um, Hey, Grace, can't believe y'all goofed us like that. Also, thanks again for the meeting. Hey, thank you so much, Grace. Thank you so much for visiting me as well. Thank you for the magenta super and thank you for visiting me. I hope you enjoyed our little talk. We're going to talk about that later, a little bit later, with a meet and greet. But thank you, thank you! Um, they didn't tell you? Yeah. <laughs> but I knew something was something was cooking, right? Something was cooking. Of course, why would they ask for the passport this early? But then eventually they did tell us that we they wanted us to go to Japan. And lo and behold, it was 
a few days right after Taylor Swift. A few days after, I was like, oh, thank you. Thank heckin' God that um, it was after Taylor Swift because otherwise, I'm not, I, I, I wouldn't go. Otherwise, I would have been the only stars, Ian. <laughs> only Hala star to not be in Japan that day. <laughs> um, the the Japan thing wasn't really like required from us. Um, it wasn't really required. We, uh, I think the first one that decided among us that they're gonna go is like Gibby. Um, Ruse probably has a whole story about his problems with going to Japan. Uh, Gerard also, Gerard. For me, it came a little bit later because I had this whole Taylor Swift thing. And even like a week before Hollow Expo, I still wasn't sure. I still wasn't sure completely if I was gonna go. Um, said he can't wait for the soju. <laughs> Yago personally scheduled so you can go to the era stuff. Thank you so much, Yago sama. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> They knew about the Taylor Swift. Yeah, because if they were going to schedule freaking Taylor, the Taylor Swift concert the same time as Hollow Expo, you know where people will go to? Probably still Hollow Expo. There probably isn't a lot of overlap between Taylor Swift fans and, you know, Hollow Live fans, but whatever. Right? Who knows? Who knows at this point? Um. <laughs> yeah, I was in the same venue as the, um, as uh, Risu Senpai and Yofi Senpai. And however, I, I, I didn't really know that they'd be there. I don't think they announced it anywhere. I could have gave I could have gave them my me -he -he, uh friendship bracelet and my I had an onion boy bracelet. <laughs> what if I gave Risu Senpai the onion boy bracelet? What? What? You know I love my onion boy. Eh, it works, it works. Um Imagine if guys didn't know the experience. I wonder if they were around the same. I wonder if the same like category, because uh, there's categories for the tickets. I wonder if they were the same. I wonder if they were literally maybe next to me somewhere, and I just didn't know. Um, all I know is that the girl next to me, to the right, was a bit annoyed by my jumping around. I was jumping during Reputation so much. I was jumping so much. Um. Cause of course I jump. I think they're more of a, more a fearless girly. They're more of a fearless, you know, speak now girly. That's because that's when they really stood up and they they just sat around reputation time because I don't know if they sat during reputation because I was just I was just jumping and pushing, <laughs> not really pushing, but I was the basically like our shoulders and arms were like touching each other because you know the the seats were a little bit packed. Um. Uh, so I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't pushing, but the seats are packed. The seats are like really, really close to each other. There's uh... <laughs> sitting a month. You know what? I'd say that as well. But damn, by the around the end, my feet, my thighs are like, <gasps> I can't, I can't. I love you, Mother Taylor, but I can't. I'm gonna get cramps any second now. <laughs> Why would you sit during reputation? I don't know. Then the the person in front of me was like a mother. You know what's funny? You know what's super funny? I say mother, like a, whatever. Like a mother, actual mother. What's funny is that months and months ago, I went to the theater to watch the Eras Tour movie. And right next to me, to the left, was also a mother and her child and her daughter. And her daughter, right? And it, I'm not sure, but it doesn't didn't seem like they were enjoying the movie. They were just sat down. They were sat down. And here's the thing with the Taylor Swift movie, you're they actually allow you to sing out loud. They actually allow you to be as loud as you want. Because, you know, that's just part of the experience. And there's a the mother and her daughter to the left. I didn't look like they were enjoying. And they went home before the movie was over. They went home before the movie was over. And then fast forward to today, I mean to the Taylor Swift concert, I was there and there was another mother in front of me <laughs> who was just sitting down all throughout. 
Bruh! <laughs> Am I- do I- do I bring mothers to the Taylor Swift concert and they don't enjoy it? <laughs> what a waste of the disrespect. You know what, maybe, you know what, maybe, you know, maybe they're after a lot of walking in Singapore, maybe, maybe, I get it, I get it. Sometimes your feet are get, your feet get tired, your thighs get tired, you have to sit down. But it's just, it was just very interesting to me that both times I was at the concert, there was a mother that didn't, didn't look like they were enjoying. <laughs> it was so loud, no one could literally hear if you sang or just sing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, people were taking videos too during the movie, whatever. They they weren't able to take pictures of the actual movie, but you know, they took picture um took videos of themselves singing and you know, it's fun. It's fun. <clears throat> Bro attracts sitting mothers. <laughs> Sometimes you're a mom with joint issues, but you yeah, but you accompany your child out of love. Yeah, they were definitely with their kid, and their kid was very very energetic, very energetic. But at the end, at the end, really, at the end, a lot of people were sitting down. A lot of people were tired. Also, Singapore, hot, hot, hot and humid. You know, I get it. I get it. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like, yo, you suck. Why are you sitting down? I get it. It was very tiring. It was very tiring. <laughs> but at the end, there was, of course, a big surge of energy because you were at midnight. We're at the midnight section, and you know it's gonna end. You know karma is coming soon. And I'm like, no, I need to jump up. I need to, I need to stand up and dance. And you know, that's what happens. <sighs> Summer in Singapore right now. Hmm. Pretty sure, pretty sure the Lizzie and Singapore share the same weather. Ish. Yeah, karma's the guy on the Chiefs. Apparently that's like that's not like in everything ever since you know she first did it. I didn't know that. I thought it was in every concert. But apparently only when uh, Tavi Kelsey. Tavi Kelsey is Tavi Kelsey. Travis Kelsey is there. Um, and right beside it, I don't know how I went home after that six hours of standing. <laughs> Tavi Kelsey. <laughs> Self insert. <laughs> SG only has summer too. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure we share the same. We share the we share the time zones. We share the weather. It's so hot, man. It's so hot, bro. My AC isn't. You know, before this AC, the wind, the breeze from the AC would reach my hair and it would move my hair a little. But now it's not. Uh, so yeah, that was that was that was Singapore. We're not gonna talk too much about that. Uh, Japan, Japan, Japan. Anyway, what else do I need to talk about? Japan moving, going to Japan. Oh yeah, um, the managers asked us multiple times what we wanted, where we wanted to go, what we wanted to do. And honestly, I didn't really have much of an idea of what I wanted to do in Japan. All I know is that although my 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 manager um, had a lot of ideas. Uh, that are, you know, that are basically geared towards my interests. Like, uh, my manager was the one who suggested the Square Enix Cafe. Also, the Retro Games place. They showed me a picture of Artanelico. Uh, PlayStation 2 uh, Artanelico. Um, also, a copy of F Tale of Memories, Tale of Melodies, the PS2 game. And stuff like that. No, okay, okay. I want to go there. I want to go there. And they gave me a bunch of maps to a bunch of different places where I can get merch. Um, and different things. Anime stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So th they gave me a lot of uh, things to do for when I'm mostly free. Yeah. Thank you for the hot the hot dog. Thank you for the glizzy. Thank you for the glizzy. Yeah, yeah. And all the Manus, all the Manusans did that for the others as well. I know the others wanted to go to like a cat cafe to stuff like that. Um, but yeah. Then also, all the other boys, like the Tempest boys, also had like plans that they want to do with all of us, like a dinner. And there was like a company dinner as well, which is great. Uh, but yeah. Take a glimpse at the Square Enix HQ. No, I wasn't able to do that. I didn't really have a lot of time for my own just personal activities. It was mostly work. 
work, 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 work. But yeah. Anyway, all I wanted to do was just tag along, and I, rem I remember, I remember before Japan, um, Gerard was like, "I'm just gonna stick to Octavio, you know, South Elise, and stick together." And me and me and Gerard were like, "Bro, the Tempest boys are gonna be so tall. <laughs> the Tempest boys are gonna be so tall, right? It's gonna be it's gonna be weird looking up to them like that." We're gonna see gold bullet and he's gonna be like, wow, nine feet tall, ruse ten feet tall, you know? And we're like, no, nah, you know. <laughs> South Elysians are gonna stick together in a foreign land. <laughs> and so th there was there was something like, yeah, Haka was small. Haka was small. At least Haka was small. Flay on around my height, you know. Then you know everybody's just tall. Everybody's just taller. The heck. So yeah. <laughs> so we finally, we finally, the day finally came. Uh, I remember I literally came home from the Taylor Swift from Singapore around 5 p.m. ish. Got home, then packed for uh, my Japan trip. Then the next day flew at around 12 ish, 12, 12 lunchtime maybe, something around, something, something around that, yeah. I remember, I remember I was like, I was a bit stressed out because here's the thing. I flew many times before when I was a kid, right? And many, many times my mother would be, my mom, basically both of us would be stopped at the baggage, baggage drop area because our baggage is really heavy, <laughs> very heavy. And I've experienced multiple times us having to throw things in a trash can, have to give have to give things in our baggage to like some of our relatives because yeah because they're overpacked, um, because my mom my mom is a lot of things my mom my mom brings a lot of things a lot of uh, I think we call it pasalubong pasalubong um, food things like that clothes whatever whatever you can think of. That's just the South Elysium way, you know? Thank you for the membership. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's just a South Elysian way. You bring anything and everything you can give to all of your relatives wherever you're going to and from. Mm -hmm. So we brought souvenirs, anything, even freaking DVDs of like South Elysian shows. You know? <laughs> um... And then, so I was a bit stressed out. I was like, hmm, because the, at least in the recent years, in recent years, because in recent years, whenever I fly, I just choose uh, chow, charbu parsherfork, charbu parsherfork, right? Because it's cheap. It's really, really cheap. Charbu parsherfork, right? Um, cheap. I don't need food. I don't need food on the plane. I don't need nothing. All I need is a very cheap ticket. You can literally go to J J go to Japan next month, and it it'll cost you like um how how one hundred twenty dollars or something. One hundred twenty USD USD. You can go to Japan right now. <clears throat> That's round trip. No 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 one twenty. What six thousand? What six thousand South Elysian coins? What six thousand South Elysian coins? That's around one twenty, right? One hundred to two hundred. Yeah, they have special deals sometimes. Yeah, they have special deals sometimes. Mm, 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 mm. You can you can go to their website right now and look for the dates where you can get a freaking round trip for a hundred something. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, the thing is. You know, you get also, of course, because it's cheap, you also get the minimum. Like the minimum baggage, you don't get food, you don't get anything. In exchange for it being very cheap, which is great, right? Which is, which is great. Um, so I'm used to that. I'm used to that. And then, actually, the our ticket to Japan was paid by, by Yago. Our ticket to and from Japan was paid by Yago. And honestly, I wouldn't have gone to Japan if it wasn't paid. <laughs> I wouldn't have gone to Japan otherwise if it wasn't free. 
right? No way! No way I'm gonna- no way I'm gonna buy another ticket to Japan or whatever. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> no way! Um, so I was like, thank you! Oh, it's free, thank you! And the airline they got for us was actually really nice. <laughs> <laughs> was really nice. I was I was expecting I was expecting a ticket from Charbu Par You know, Charbu Par But apparently not. Um uh, <laughs> They had like the baggage that you can bring was like two two 23 kilogram check-in baggage and one 10 kilogram <clears throat> carry-on baggage. And I'm so not used to that. I'm so not used to that. <laughs> I was packing my bags. I was packing my bags and I was like, I had just one check-in baggage and my check-in baggage were really heavy, but it amounted to just like 17 kilograms. So I was like, huh? Oh, what? I can bring more? But I, I didn't need, I didn't, I didn't need, really need to bring more. I didn't really want to pack like so much. Um, I was gonna bring my laptop and everything on my carry-on and I, uh, no. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, because I'm usually used to seven kilograms carry-on and like, what, 20? 20 kilograms check-in and one, only one? Um, so that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> so I got that. Everything was ready. I had no stress. I had no stress whatsoever that I'm gonna be throwing things from my bag when I get to the airport. <laughs> Uh, so, cool. So I got to the airport. Everything was silky, silky smooth. And you know what? You know what's fun is that because of my Singapore trip, I felt like, ha, I know how to travel. I know, I know all the steps. I know exactly how to do this. I know exactly how many, how many hours it, it'll take to get from freaking check-in of the baggage up to the boarding pass, the boarding gates. <clears throat> All of your tickets are sponsored? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. So I went there. You know, I already told the story of how I saw Gerard in line sitting on his cart, um, just looking at the ground or whatever, and just periodically checking his his face on his phone because he just he really needs to keep that crown straight. You know, he really needs to keep his hairstyle perfect and his crown straight all the time. And then he went to the baggage drop. Then I was lined up behind him. Then I saw the name he put in the thing. You need to you need to sign and everything. I saw his name, Gerard T. Rexford. And I was like, ha! That was Gerard! So now I know. Now I know that it was exactly him. Because you know, there are there are other people, there are other people in the airport with crowns, you know, with crowns and red hair. I needed to make sure exactly that it was Gerard T. Rexford. So I put my bags in, dropped it in, and I was like, you know what? You know what? I know how this goes. I came, I came to the airport right, four hours before flight, four hours before our departure, and I was literally, we were literally there before the check-in of the baggage was even open. I was in my mind. I was like, I came here four hours before the flight. You better open that friggin' baggage drop right now. But now, and it had to open up like an hour later. So the baggage drop opens like three hours before the flight. So it doesn't really matter if you come here like, if you go to the airport like four hours before the flight, they'll just open it anyway three hours before the flight. So whatever, right? So we had to wait for a, for a long time. That's why Gerard was sitting on his freaking cart there because it was bored, I guess. Maybe he was playing games on his phone. I don't know. <clears throat> so baggage drop, baggage dropped, everything good. And I was like, hmm, you know what? Because I was with my mom. I mean, my mom came with me to the airport, and they're just like in the in the pa non passenger area. And I was like, you know what? Maybe let's let's have some. Let's eat first. I'm gonna eat with my mom first. So we ate at Marigrarsh, Marigrarsh, Marie Marie Grasha. <laughs> uh, ate with my mom. Ate some food. And my mom even bought like crispy creme. And I was like, no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bring that crispy creme to the to the airplane. No way. 
I'm not gonna risk them throw those donuts away. So. <laughs> you can have that. You can have those donuts. <laughs> um, so we ate. Pretty fun, pretty fun. <clears throat> and yeah. Then I went, I went to the thing. I, I guess it's called like immigration and security thing. Anyway, I just went through easy peasy. And I realized I had like one hour left until boarding. Did you get the Tempest Boys banana chips? Oh, I'm going to tell you about the, the thing I gave everyone in a few. Yeah. So I went through. Then I was like, mm, I still had one hour to go. Now here is, the, did immigration ask about Hollow X? Nah, they didn't ask anything. They were like, okay, you can go. You can go. <clears throat> so we went through. I went through. Then had one hour to go. Now, here's the thing. When you go through immigration or whatever, there is a section there for airplane lounges. Um, you can go immediately straight to the airplane lounges or you can go straight to your boarding gate. Now, here is where my freaking anxiety comes in. I want to go to the airplane lounge. I want to see what's up there, right? I want to see what's up because I have a, like a credit card where... Uh, they can, you know, get me into the airport lounge. <clears throat> but I also didn't know where the heck my gate was. So I went, I went to the gate first to see what's going on. I went to the gate. I walked towards the gate. It took me a few minutes, 10 minutes. I was like, okay, so the gate is here. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go back. <laughs> okay, I'm going back then. I'm going back. I'm going to go back to the lounges because I really want to get to the lounges. Now that I know exactly where the gates are, I can go to the lounges without any stress. I walk back 10 minutes again. I head into the lounge. I give my credit card. And the lady's like, okay, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. I get in. 30 minutes left. There's so many people in this freaking lounge. Why? Everybody, everybody has access to this freaking lounge. I, I asked, oh, uh, is this seat free? Can I sit here? Oh, no, the seat is taken. Then I go to this other seat. Uh, can I sit here? Is there, is there, is this seat free? And, oh, the seat is taken. Then I go to the, uh, can I sit here? This a... If this seat is free, if this seat is taken, where is the person sitting on this chair then? Those were the nice chairs. Those were the nice chairs. Then I went inside and I, I was able to sit in like, sit in like, you know, those high chairs, high chairs next to like a bar, a bar thing. So that's where, that's where I sat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, grabbing the free food. Exactly. I sat there. Uh, kind, kind of like a baby chair, kind of like a baby chair. And I sat there and I brought out my phone and everything. I, I doom scrolled on my phone and I spent 10 minutes there. I was <laughs> 10 minutes. And I was like, okay, 10 minutes left. It's time for me to walk. <laughs> so I spent 10, 10 minutes in the lounge. And I had to go because my flight was in 10 minutes. So uh, I walked back. I was, okay, at least I spent my I, I spent some time, some time in the airplane lounge, I guess. Sure, fine. It was great, whatever. <laughs> yeah, all that time looking for a seat. Um... <laughs> So I walked there. I used the walkalators. Thank God for the walkalators, right? Thank God. I get there and I see the boarding gate, and then it's the it's the same thing I told you. I saw Gerard T. Rexford. Now here, I did say that I <clears throat> there was a way for me to get to Gerard T. Rexford by just going straight to him, but that'd mean he'd probably see me going to him, right? So I had to use a walkalator to get past him way to the back enter the boarding gate at the back and then surprise him from behind so i did that i took the extra steps to get past the boarding gate to sneak sneak behind them hey thank you for joining the sock puppets yeah and then i was like i patted him on the shoulder i tapped him on the shoulder and he was like oh shit, it's you and I, in the loudest voice you can imagine in the loudest voice you can imagine, that's more, that's not acceptable. It's not an acceptable voice to use in a public space. That's not like a freaking, 
That's not like a concert. You can only do that at like a concert or something, not in a quiet airport. <clears throat> oh shit, it's you. And basically, we talked to each other in the South Elysian language. You know what? You know what's funny is that first we tried talking to each other in English, but then I was like, stop talking to me in English, bruh. In my mind, I said that in my mind. So no matter what he said, I started replying to him in South Elysian. And he, ve he eventually got the memo and start started talking to me in South Elysian. We're not gonna be we're not gonna be talking in English here. We aren't in front of the Tempest boys here. We're not in front of the Manesans. We're not in front of anybody. We're gonna be talking the South Elysian language right now. And so we did. <clears throat> <laughs> Digimon <laughs> Lods Lods Gerard Lods Now here's Here's what's funny That's funny We were talking Right We were talking And basically the conversation I had to say The names of Gibby and Ruse And I remember I said it out loud Yeah Gibby and Ru Gibby and Ruse Something something Gibby and Ruse Something 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 And he was like Bro Don't say that out loud I was like Oh shit, you're right. Then he punched me. He punched me on my left, like, arm. Punched me twice. <laughs> and I was like, no, I mean, Luz Viminda. <laughs> I mean, Luz Viminda. Not Ruse, Luz Viminda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Luz Viminda. <laughs> I tried to save it. I tried to save it. Good thing we were, we were, I don't know what's going on here, but this guy sat like 10 seats away from anybody. I don't know why. Why would he do that? There was, there was no one around us in a 10 seat radius. <laughs> um, <laughs> Shy boy. <laughs> Then we we talked, right? We talked, and he was like, "Oh, bro, I, I'm gonna g I need to give you something." So he gave me something. Um, he bought some stuff to give to the people in uh in Zinokuni, right? And he gave he gave me he actually gave me two things. Um, the thing that you guys want to know is the one like you know like Ruse's magic wand or something, Gibby's. What are, the Gibby's cooking set, right? He gave me one thing more in the airport. Um, what did you get from Dino Man? A toy? <laughs> that's a secret. But thank you for the soup. That's a secret. I'm gonna show you soon. I'm gonna show you soon. So he 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 brought out some of these keychains. He brought out some of these keychains, and I was like, bro, bro, you're not gonna give me one of these. I am from South Elysium. I can just get this when I whenever I want to. I was like, nah, 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 let's get, let's get. Um, Rev Lake, can I get a ticket for half price? No! Pay the full price! <laughs> but thank you for the membership. Thank you, thank you. And it was these keychains. And you know, these keychains in this place from, called Kaltara. Kaltara. Like Kaltara. And he showed me they're like, there's a, they're like boats, they're like different things, different South Elysian things, right? And I was like, bro, I'm just gonna get this chinelas. I'm just I'm just gonna get this slipper, slipper keychain, you know, so the other boys can actually get like more South Elysian, the actual like really South Elysian themed stuff. But I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna get this slipper. <laughs> this chinelas. Whatever. Uh, I'm not gonna get the really nice actual South Elysian things. Because I am from South Elysian. Um so I took I took the keychain. I have it here with me. I'm here. It's dangling in front of me right now. Thank you, thank you, Gerard T Rex for this. I think the price <laughs> the price tag is still here. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> help! 129 South Elysium coins. Wow, this is an expensive keychain, I have to say. This is an expensive keychain. Oh my god. What? 
129 South Belize and Coins. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna so I'm gonna guess that all the others also got the the tag. <laughs> That's like tier two mention. Yeah? <laughs> so I got that. And we were talking about things we brought, right? Because I, I remember Haka. Haka told us, you know, you, you, you should bring something for, you know, the staff or the senpais and stuff like that. Uh, it's just, it's just, you know, good. I guess like a courtesy or, courtesy or something. Out of respect or something like that. So of course, of course. And... You remember during our snack tasting stream, he talked about uh, Pachi, the candy Pachi, right? And he basically showed that to me. He basically showed that to me um, that he was gonna bring that and give it to everybody. And he, I don't know what, I don't know what happened. He opened the packaging in front of me and I ate one, and ate one because he just he just wanted to eat one. I was like, why? <laughs> why? You're gonna eat one right now? Okay, okay then. I ate one too. Did I eat one too? I don't remember. I don't remember if I ate one too. And I got the he he got he ate Apache and basically because the the packaging is now open, you know, the sugar spilled from the packaging. <laughs> the sugar spilled from the packaging. I was like, oh uh, what? So he made a mess there with the sugar. Um Oh, there's a chocolate brand called Pachi. 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 Uh, so yeah, sugar spilled in the airport boarding gate. And then we were finally called. We were finally called to board the thing. Now, the plane that we went on, I think he, he told you guys about this, but it was the Pikachu plane. It was a Pikachu plane. I really didn't want to say it when I, when I first shared this because who maybe there were some people here that were on that Pikachu plane. You know, it was a Pikachu plane. The 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 exterior had Pokemon, like Pokemon painted on it. Then um, everything inside was Pokemon themed. Mm -mm. Everything inside was Pokemon themed, mostly Pikachu. So you know the headrests have like art of Pokemon. Um, even the flight attendants were in like the Pokemon. I don't know the the hosp you know the pokemon hospital thing Hus uh pokemon clinic thing they were in that kind of outfit kind of like a maid kind of like a maid outfit some of them were in pink some of them were in uh sky blue it was so nice i was like what at first it didn't at first it didn't really click with me that their outfits were also from pokemon because i was just what no way Japanese flight attendants are just in maid outfits. What's going on? But no, apparently, apparently it was a, <laughs> apparently it was because it's a Pokemon plane. It's a Pikachu plane. Then, <laughs> oh, lol, Lumao, I know, right? I know, right? What a joy. What a joy to see flight attendants in maid outfits, in colorful maid outfits. They even had like, they even had like the apron, the apron stuff. They had like a nice ribbon somewhere. It was good. It was good. Then when you when you go in, when you go in, there's like Pokemon music as well. Pokemon music was blaring on the speakers. All the Pokemon music you, th you can think of. It's there. Maybe. Maybe. Probably not. Um, so we were we were basically going to, I don't know, Pokemon Island. What's the Pokemon I Island? Johto, something like that. <laughs> uh, me and Gerard were two, two seats, two rows apart. Uh, we were basically in the same row, but he was uh, two rows in front of me. He was on the aisle seat, and I was on the window seat. I hate the window seat. I hate it so much because first, um, it's really bright. Second, it's really hot. Third. If I want to go to the Octopotty, I have to disturb two other people in order to get to the to the Octopotty if I needed to. Um, I'd rather I be disturbed. I'd rather I be disturbed by other people instead of me 
being the one that disturbs other people. I can't. I can't. Um, especially on a, on a plane. I don't know if it's like if there's like turbulence, and you're trying to get out, but there's turbulence, and you're like, oh, oh, I'm sorry, ah. Oh. I bumped, ah, uh, bumped into every, ah! Uh, you hold onto the chair in front of you and you hold the person's hair, ah! Uh, right? When you're panicking because of the turbulence? Nah, I'd, I'd rather be the one that gets disturbed rather than the one that disturbs people. <laughs> Not the hair, yeah. Ah, uh, of course. You know, sometimes when you're, you're just using your hands, you just hold onto the seat in front of you and so, suddenly you, <laughs> there's hair, right? Um, so yeah, I d really don't like in the window seat, but whatever, I was in the window seat. Now here is a thing that surprised me, surprised me so much. Right? It was hot. It was hot. There was no, like, slot in the, um, in the ceiling for AC. Yeah, it was hot in the plane. I was like, people, people were trying to find where the AC was on the ceiling, but there wasn't. There was only one for the light. Yeah. And it was actually announced that the cabin would be 27 degrees Celsius. And I'm like, why? Why is the plane gonna be conditioned to 27 degrees Celsius? Why? And here's, here's why, here's actually why. I mean, one of the reasons why I think that was. It's because in Japan, all the indoor places are also 27 degrees Celsius. That's the one thing that I really didn't like is that I, I really like the cold, right? I really like the cold. So because it's really cold outside, they use, I don't know if they use like a heater or whatever. They they basically condition the indoor areas to be 27 degrees. You know, so so when you go in, it's it's warm because uh, outdoors, it's really, really cold. So that's why I think that's it's the same way with this uh, with this plane. Because when you get to Japan, when you go out, it's going to be really cold. So I had a, I had a big problem. I was wearing a jacket. I wore my jacket right before boarding. I never wear jackets in South Elysium. But I wore a jacket before boarding because I was, I was expecting the plane to be cold. And when I get down, I didn't want to wear my jacket and be like, Ugh! and get down from the plane and be like, oh, it's so cold. You know, I wore my jacket. So I was, I was sweating. <laughs> I was sweating, man. <laughs> And it wasn't just me. It was other other people were sweating too. I'm gonna guess the Japanese people on the plane. Mm, pretty cool. Pretty nice. Nice temperature. Warm. I love it. But the South Elysians in the plane. <laughs> tongues out. <laughs> saliva. <laughs> it's so hot. You know. Yeah, they probably felt comfy. You're right. And there was actually AC. There was actually a, there was vents for the AC, but you couldn't really adjust them to point to you or anything. Um, they were just there. So I was wondering if it might the the ACs were not pointing towards the window seat. They were pointing more towards the middle, uh, the middle and the aisle seat. So I I was wondering maybe it would be colder if I was in the middle or the aisle seat. But whatever, right? Whatever. I was in the window seat. And here's a thing. I was like, I hope I'm not window seat when I go home. I was I was window seat again, but I had the foresight to just wear a t-shirt when I went home. So it was, it was fine. Um, but anyway, I sat there. The the couple next to me was a nice like Japanese couple. They were actually really nice throughout the flight. Um, of course, we didn't interact. But for example, when you know when the food now here's the thing i didn't expect there to be food i did not expect there to be food at all because i was used to traveling without food on the plane now back when i traveled with my mom you know um we always had food in the plane i was used to that but you know for the for the flights that i pay for myself no food 
<laughs> I literally pick a plane and they give me an option. Do you want food on your flight? I was like, nope, nothing to keep things, you know, to keep things cheaper. Right. And so they gave us food and I was so, I was so, I was, I was not sure if they were going to give me food specifically. Now the couple next to me, they had their trays down. They had their tables down and I didn't. Because I really didn't know. And I didn't want to be the guy that had my table down. And then they're like, oh no, your, your seat doesn't have food. So I kept my table up. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think my plane is a budget airline. Um, I think whoever owns this airline has a budget, has a separate budget airline. Something like that. You know what? I'm just going to say NA. All Nippon Airways. I don't know if that's budget or anything, but you know, I'm here in South Elysium. You can't catch me anymore. Any. <laughs> so they gave us food. And then I didn't want to bring my table down, right? Now here, here is what I was, I was looking at. So they served the food on the left side first. They served the food on the left side first. I was like, oh, maybe the left side and the middle aisle are the ones that get the food. Then us on the right aisle are the ones that don't get food. Right? <laughs> maybe maybe there's kind of like a separation for that. I don't know. I had no idea. Maybe there's like some <laughs> So, I was like, okay. Whatever. We'll see. We'll see. Then suddenly uh, the the flight attendants in their cool pink and sky blue outfits went to our aisle and then they were serving food. It's like, uh, do I have food? Then I saw Gerard was served food because he was two seats. Me, Ger me and Gerard were, were really weren't sure if we were going to get food. But then I saw he got food and I think he got Pepsi or I don't know. Hey, Winnie Winter, thank you so much for the super. I'm glad that your experience in Nikuni was a good one. The events leading up to it. Can't wait for next week. We are so we are so back. We are so back. But thank you so much for the super. Thank you. Thank you. Um... You were looking at each other? Nah, he wasn't looking back. I was, I just, I was just trying to look at him from where I came, from where I can, and he was served food. He was served food. So, okay, it, I, I'm gonna bring my my table down. But I still had reservations in my head. You know, maybe what if Gerard is just the favored child, and his ticket has food, and mine doesn't. So I still had that fear. I still had that fear in my brain. So. Anyway, the the flight attendant came to my aisle, and the couple next to me was very were very like, uh, you know, were cool. Um, they pointed at me with you know with a hand. They're like, "Oh, you order first. You say your order first, or something like that." Oh, okay. Oh, uh, oh, uh, thank you. Then they gave me like a laminated paper. My internal self talk. Yeah. I have. Oh no, I overthink everything. I overthink everything. They gave me a laminated paper and then they had a choice a or b and i got the i got the seafood choice i forgot what it was but it was seafood the the it was either beef it was either chicken or beef or and or seafood then i was like oh can i have a please and they gave me a then <laughs> <laughs> Then the drinks were next. The drinks were next. And I, I... I became a little bit more brave after that experience. Of course, if I have food, I'm also gonna have drinks, right? Then, however, I wasn't sure exactly what drinks they had. Um, if I was, you know, if I was less brave, I'd just be like Pepsi because Gerard ordered Pepsi in the front. And I was like, okay, that's a sure choice to say, Pepsi. But when when the lady arrived and the flight attendant arrived, I was like, no, I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna say something. Um, can I have apple juice, please? Uh, well, no. Do you have apple juice? Then they were like, ah, oh, yes, we have apple juice. Uh, can I have one, please? Thank you. Then they gave me apple juice. I got apple juice with my meal. Heck yeah, I got apple juice. <laughs> So I got apple juice with my meal. The meal was great. You know what's crazy? They even served ice cream after it. They even served like the Hergen Dirge. Hergen Dirge ice cream. Vanilla. 
It was great. It was great. Hargan Darge. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Hargan Darge. Hargan Darge. Oh my god. So like, what is going on? Why is why is this plane serving me Hargan Darge? Uh. I'm so not used to planes like this ever since, you know, I started paying for my own, like, tickets and stuff. Then after that, they got, they got everything. And then another attendant was coming over. It was like, do you want other drinks? I think this time was either coffee or tea. But you know what? I didn't really want coffee or tea at that point. I was like, uh, do you have water? Oh, yes. Thank you. Can I have water, please? Thank you. I got water. I got water. It was, it was the tastiest water I've ever had in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Tastiest water I've ever had in my life. Then, yeah. Anyway, uh, the 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 flight was smooth, ninety percent of the time. Then at the very end, <clears throat> they said it was like very the the it was very stormy or something at the airport. So we had to like do circles over and over for like twenty minutes or something. And through that 20 minutes, I was only seeing the clouds. I was seeing the clouds. I was seeing the light of the of the light of the wing, you know, reflecting across the clouds and stuff. And we were falling. We were falling and going up. We were, uh, uh, uh. We, were we were literally doing this. Ooh, I was. Then we were doing that, right? I was like, OK, I'm going to die. But then eventually we were able to land. It was so cool seeing just seeing all clouds. Just seeing all clouds, right? Then the moment we get to an altitude below the clouds, it's so cool seeing like suddenly it's just a city. Suddenly just a city lights and everything. It was so cool to see. I wish I could have uh, took a video of that. But then when we finally just saw the city, you know, the landing itself was very smooth. It was very smooth. It was cool to see. I was like, oh my god! I'm in Japan! I'm in Zinokuni! Holy shit! Honestly, going to Japan, I'm a weeb, right? I'm a weeb. I love my anime. I love my games. I, I only dreamt of Japan. I never thought I'd ever just go there, much less go there, like, for free. You know? So I was like, damn! I got to Japan for free! <laughs> I made all the correct choices! in my life to get to Japan for free! <laughs> so, so I got to Japan, we got to the airport. Again, the the first thing me and Gerard did, bidets, we went to our separate cubicles. I was quiet and just using all the options. And Gerard was like, oh shit! Oh shit, the hype is real! So we did that for five minutes. Even the dryer, the music, the seat warmer, everything. Tested everything. Then, <laughs> then we went out. Then there was literally no one else. No one else was walking anymore, because they all just went went first. We were just we were literally the last two people walking <laughs> towards the towards the arrivals. <laughs> no rating. The rating gold, gold uh, diamond. I don't know what platinum. I don't what crystal. Mother Crystal out of 10. Mommy Crystal out of 10. Mm. Feels like you're a god sitting on the, in those toilets. And I was like, no, eh, you know what? The toilet, probably the toilet in the airport, probably really good, right? Probably really good. And maybe the toilets outside, not as good. Ha! I was wrong. All the toilets are good. <laughs> All the toilets are good. Even just a random toilet in a random park. Feels like you're in a freaking hotel. I left so many little scuffets. You keep stepping on them. Oh, <laughs> don't! No, Haka, don't! No! Don't do that! I mean, it's fine, I guess. They're, they're invulnerable. They're invincible. <laughs> but hey, Haka, hey! So, we arrived in Japan. And what's funny was, I I ordered a Suica card, a welcome Suica, via clock, you know, via clock, the clock app, 
<clears throat> because because I know I miss you too, Haka. I miss you. I want to see you again, Haka. When I come back, when I come back, you know what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a lot because I I the one of the thing that I really regret the most is I was just there for a week. I wish I was there for more because all the fun stuff happened when I was gone. The heck. <laughs> No, don't come to South Elysium. I mean, Haka will survive in South Elysium. He will easily. He will. <laughs> yeah, karaoke with Haka? Really? That didn't happen? God damn it. We're also supposed to play like Twister. We're supposed to play like Naked Twister. Naked Twister off collab as well. Right? Um, but it didn't happen because I had to go. Really, really quick. Naked Twister with oil! <laughs> That's actually real. That's actually real. Haka actually did say that in our Discord. <laughs> ah. But yeah. Don't say it's real. It's real. I don't know what to tell you. It's real. Maybe next year. Maybe next year. <laughs> we need the oil because if not, then something. It'll be a bit harder to reach, like, the colors. I don't know, the colors, the shapes? I don't know what's going on. The kanji? Yeah. Imagine Twister with kanji. The heck? Difficulty impossible. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to the airport. Then I bought a Suica card. A welcome Suica via the clock app. Uh, we have to hold them to Twister next time. <laughs> We'll see, you'll see, you'll see. But then we finally met uh, Shikamane and uh, my Mane, right? <clears throat> uh, then we finally found them, and Shikamane immediately, the first thing that she did, bonk Gerard for being so loud, for being very loud in the airport. Um, <clears throat> what else happened? All right, me and Gerard were stressing. Me and Gerard were stressing, you know, lining up for, I don't know, the immigration place. I don't know what's going on there. You know, you, you need to give your, you need to give your fingerprint. Then you need to go through, you know, you need to take a picture of your face or whatever. What's going on there? We were stressing because the line was really long. And the people there, like the ushers or whatever, were telling us to, to file, to, to sign a form. To sign a actual physical form, like a physical paper form. But Gerard only had like, Gerard only had like the um, the QR code. But because but because they were so intent on having us sign the form, we were like, oh no, do we really need the form or the? Can you go through with the QR code? And throughout the whole time, we're like, ah oh, shit, oh shit, no one's using the QR code. Everybody's using the form, Gerard. I swear to God, if you get to the front of the line and then they're like, go back to the back of the line and just sign up the form. Um, you're gonna be so screwed. And also there was a there was a there was like a line there with a bunch of robots. I don't know what's going on there, a bunch of machines we had to go to. <gasps> what's going on? And the ushers weren't even the ushers were all speaking Japanese. The ushers were all speaking Japanese. <laughs> all of the people here, most of the people here are like foreigners. And they're all shouting instructions in Japanese. And like, what? What's happening? So we just went with the flow. We we were able to survive. We were able to survive. Then we got our baggage. We got our baggage and everything. Cool, cool, cool. Then we got out. We met Shikamane and my Mane. And remember, I bought a welcome suika. And I was like, I need to go to the third floor to get my welcome suika. But they showed us, hey, no, you don't need to. You actually, we actually got. Uh, welcome Suica for both of you. So yeah, we got Welcome Suica with with actual money inside. The money I actually used up all of it throughout my whole trip. All of it, I used it all up to the very last cent. I used it all, which is great. So we got a Welcome Suica because leading up to the trip, I know that uh, they say that the IC cards. You know, the Suica cards, the IC cards were like, um, were out of stock, mostly. Yeah, because Shinri did say that he he wasn't able to get an IC card because it was like out of stock. There weren't any more cards. There, yeah, there's a chip shortage or something like that. 
Um, so I was surprised. First off, that we got two welcome suikas, and thank you, because those welcome suikas, the real MVPs, the real MVP when using the train, it was great. <clears throat> They don't give them out easily anymore. Oh, yeah, South Elysium things in Zunokuni. I know, right? So I don't know what happened. I wasn't able to get my welcome Suica from the from the third floor. Uh, that's just that's just money, money down the drain. But it was it wasn't super. It was cheap. It wasn't you know expensive. It was cheap enough. Uh -huh. So oh well, abayo, abayo Suica card that I left in the third floor. I hope someone got you instead. I hope someone else got you. Um, so yeah, so we got home. Oh yeah, when we were going home, we had to, we went to a nearby ATM for, oh yeah, we were, we were in the train first. We were in the train and me and Gerard were like, Gerard was like, I am overwhelmed. You know, there are, there are people talking in Japanese Everybody sounding like a Japanese voice actor. <laughs> um, there were we suddenly saw a bunch of Japanese people in like their best drip on the train. Um, then it was as time went by because we went through many stations, a bunch of more people came inside the train. It was very, it was very, very tight, but everybody was still really respectful. Um. Did they sound like VTubers? Yes! <laughs> Everybody sounded like they're in a Final Fantasy or something. <laughs> um, yeah, everybody's dripped out. Everybody dripped out head to toe. Up to the shoes. Dripped out. Um, <clears throat> so it was very overwhelming. We, um, Me and Jura were sitting down. Shikamane and Maimane were just standing up, right? They were in front of us. Uh, but yeah, I was like, Whoa. hearing, hearing the sound, seeing everything. We were in the Shinkansen, Shinkansen or something like that. Seeing all the Japanese billboards outside, all the Japanese towns outside the window. I was like, oh, I'm here for free. <laughs> and all the time, every five minutes, Gerard was getting bonked. Girl was getting bonked every five minutes. Mm -mm. Then we finally went down from the train and we went to the nearby ATM for Gerard to get money and his card wasn't working. So my card was working. I was able to withdraw. Um, I remember I we told Shikamane, uh, Gerard was like, no, I don't have any money at all. I don't have yen at all. Um, me, before the trip, I mean, before I went through the immigration and everything, I, I had one... I had money exchanged, but I was so surprised. I was I was expecting multiple Japanese yen bills, but instead I just got one singular 10,000 yen bill. Now in South Elysium, if you pay if you pay that bill for like cheap food or something, you're going to get you're going to get <laughs> you're going to get bonked in real life. Now I was like, oh no. Oh no. But we weren't in South Elysium, we were in Zinukuni. And they actually have cool, like cool systems for that. It was pretty cool. But anyway, I got one 10,000 yen bill and the man is like, oh no. Oh no. You need to withdraw more money. And so I withdrew more money. Um, but what ended up happening was I just got two, two more 10,000 yen bills. So now I had three 10,000 yen bills. <laughs> Did it really pay back you with game? Yeah, it's a school labyrinth game that we're gonna collab on. That's what he paid me. <laughs> that game. 200 South Elysian coins. But at this point, we weren't really... Gerard didn't really... Um, I didn't withdraw money for Gerard yet. Because Gerard was like, no, 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 I'm going to try it tomorrow. Because maybe it was just failing now, maybe it'll work tomorrow. So, Gerard, literally the first night, no money. Not, no money at all. Not even sure if his, if his freaking card is going to work at all. So, we got to the thing, we got to the, 
we walked to the hotel it was cold. It was cold. But it was cold, but I was I was not gonna be all oh it's so cold. It's so cold, right? I love the cold. I love the cold. I was thankful I was in a cold place. You know? I'm not gonna complain that it's cold. No way! I want this! I want to live in a place that's as cold as this! I want to I want to, you know, take my hands out of my pocket. Take my hands out of my pocket and after like 10 seconds I can't feel my fingers anymore. That's how cold it was. I couldn't feel my fingers after 10 seconds. Yeah, cold better than hot, exactly. Rather face cold than heat. <laughs> Didn't call his bank that he's using it overseas. I didn't call anything too. I didn't call anything about any of my cards. Then what was funny is that <laughs> I asked him, how many cards do you have? Use your other cards. And he, he had only one card. I was like, eh, okay, all right. What? I guess, I guess there was a point in my life that I only had one card as well, but you know, Years of being an adult made me realize <laughs> I need to have many cards. <laughs> I even ordered an F cash card. I even ordered an F cash card before my trip just to be sure. I wanted to be sure that I had a Visa, I had a MasterCard, I had like whatever card that I, you know, that I can get. Yeah, he should have used uh, F cash, but he didn't have a card for that. <clears throat> So he had one card and was not working. Oh well. Oh shit. <laughs> so we went to the hotel finally. The hotel was like self check in and was great. I was like, what's going on? Self check in? I know express checkout, but I didn't know there was self check in. So I did the self check in. We got to our rooms and everything. It was all good. Then that night, we were scheduled for a yakitori. A yakitori. You know what I realized is that. I might not be able to finish this Japan, these Japan stories in one octox. <laughs> We're one hour and 30 minutes in and we just got to Japan. We just got to Japan. So, I don't know. We'll see. We still have member submitted questions that are coming in a few minutes. I'm going to end by... God damn it. I can't believe... Are we gonna be like Battle? I didn't realize this. I didn't realize this. So that's why Battle is taking a sweet time. Because this is just what happens. There's so many things to talk about. The heck? Anyway. Anyway. We got to Japan, right? I <laughs> mean, we, we're, we're now in the hotel. Hotel, very nice. Very nice. Very small. Um, But I remember my hotel in... AK smaller. So this was this is really good. It was really nice as well. The bed was really big. The bed was really big. The table very small. And there was no closet. <laughs> the closet is like an open closet where you can just hang your things. Like hang your clothes and stuff. Um so I was like, oh, okay. This is actually nice because it's a lot of space saving things here. That I can use for my own place, you know. <clears throat> yeah, we're still in day one in Japan. <laughs> they got you fancy flights. Yeah, the hotel was free as well. That was the best thing. The hotel was free, and a lot of you were asking on Twitter or whatever, or maybe wondering why I stayed for as short as I did. It's because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go and pay for my own hotel. No way, no way. <laughs> I'm just gonna stay for the duration that they pay for. I am not gonna go out of my way to spend more money on another hotel room or Airbnb, whatever. I'm not a schmuck. <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go on a friggin' full on vacation there. No way. <laughs> Sleep outside? No, no, no. Uh, 
But yeah, we were our hotels were just for the duration of like the week of Hollow Expo. Yeah, yeah. Kuri <laughs> Potavio. Kuri Pot Mode. Yeah, yeah. Um But everyone was there in that hotel. Everyone was there. It was like Smash Bros, right? It was like Smash Bros. Everyone. Even like the managers were there at one point. They weren't there the whole week. They were only there for Hollow Expo. But everyone was there at one point. So that was great. Just, you know, bumping into Altair in the elevator. You know? Bumping into who knows in the elevator. Haka going into Ruse's room when we were doing our uh, off collab. It was fun. <laughs> You're so financially responsible though. <laughs> That's a trick. Everybody says Japan is expensive. Not, uh, uh, not to me. Japan was actually very. I, I'm looking. We were, uh, I, I, I was looking at my credit card bill. Not really credit card bill. I was looking like at, at the you know the phone, the thing on the phone where you can check like your things, right? And I spent maybe just less than, just less than, maybe around 15, 10 to fifteen k. For my for my stay in uh, Japan, and that was mostly like merch and stuff. <laughs> I had transactions there, where I went to a to a eight eleven, and I bought something for like 60, 60 South Elysian coins. <laughs> in South Elysian coins, yeah, 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 exactly. Just around you know around less than three hundred. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't really buy anything that's not a uh, combini and mostly merch. Mostly merch. I'm gonna show the merch later on. I got. I didn't get a lot of merch, but I got pretty nice ones. Some nice, unique ones. So that's really just. That's really just. Um, food, my own food, merch, snacks that I that I bring home, and some skincare products. Yeah, oh man, the skincare product. Oh boy, that's that that was expensive. That was expensive. Of course, of course, I'm gonna go. I'm going to Japan. I'm gonna buy skincare products, please. Of course, <laughs> and I'm getting them tax free. Of course, I am. I was so happy when I saw Shinri bought some. He bought some cosmetics. I was like, yeah, yeah. That's what you should be doing in Japan. <laughs> um, yeah, tax free. So anyway, that's that's like chapter seven or whatever. Um, we're gonna go out for yakitori. Now this is the point where we, where we were supposed to meet Gibby and Ruse for an Armis kind of night out at Yakitori. Yeah, I was so I was so excited. I was so excited to meet both of them. Um, <clears throat> wish that were me. Uh, yeah, I think in order for it to be tax free, it needs to get out of the country, go out of the country and stuff. And you need to have their passport or something, a foreign passport. Your table is slowly bobbing. How? It's bobbing? Well, the camera is bobbing. Very slightly. Everything in this room is bobbing at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Um, we were we were outside our hotel. And we were like, okay. Is Gibby and Ruse here? They apparently went out. Apparently Gibby arrived in Japan a few hours, a few hours before us. Before me and Gerard. Um so they already went Gibby already went out Gibby and Ruse already went out with the others to eat right <clears throat> and that's when he, that's when he got drunk <laughs> that's when he got drunk while we were still flying he was getting drunk while we were in the air how could you import stuff in Zinukuni, especially the liquid ones don't they take that out in airports it just has to be in containers less than 100 if it's a carry-on. But if it's in a check-in bag, they don't really check, I feel like. 
They don't really check liquids in check-in bags. <clears throat> yeah, bro is having a blast. Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh, yeah. Because here's here's one story. I bought. Ah, I bought La Roche a La Roche Posay product in Singapore, and that's expensive, right? That's that's a bit expensive. Um, it was just in a normal like drugstore, just a normal drugstore. There was freaking La Roche Posay, and I forgot that I put it in my carry-on bag. I forgot that it was my it was in my backpack. So when we went through the Singapore customs things, they're like, um. You have something more than 150 ml. So, oh, what? What do we have? What do I have? My, me and my friends were like, oh no, what do you have in your bag? It's like, what do I have? Then first, th then first there was like a, there was like a bottle of juice there. Ah, oh, it's just the juice bottle that I forgot. And I threw that away. But there is still one more. It's, a La it's the La Roche Posay thing that I bought. And my friends were like, oh shit, that's the expensive one, right? But then, but they were so, they were actually um, really cool there in Singapore because in my experience, they just, they just throw that in the nearby trash can, right? They actually have a trash can already stationed there in that area because a lot of things are going to be thrown there. But what they did was they brought out three, they brought out three bottles that was less, that was like 100 ml. Three, three, was that? No, that's like 300 ml bottles. Yeah. And they just had me put the, the thing, the liquid inside those bottles. They even had like, they even had sealable covers, twisty covers. Yeah. What a great airport. What a great service to passengers. Yeah, that's very considerate. Yeah. So all I need to do was just squeeze that in those three bottles and we were good. That was so nice. That was so nice. I'm actually wondering, is that like a new thing in airports now? Because back, back in my day, back in my day, they just threw that away. They threw out your Kaya toast? Spread. Oh. I guess I guess it's hard to put the Kayato spread in like three little bottles. <laughs> but that was really nice of them, yeah. Even if we were there for like a little long because I was squeezing that inside those bottles and whatever. Um, it was great. It was great. <clears throat> so, but I now knew that when I went to Japan. Cause you know, I'm a freaking jet setter, man. I know all the rules. I know everything. So Basically, my whole experience going and going from Japan, very smooth because I know all the rules. I know everything that needs to be known by anyone that's going to travel across countries. Yeah. So, yakitori, yakitori. So, we were like, okay, I guess we aren't going to meet Gibby and Ruse right now, but... Uh, Shikamane and Gerard were like, no, we're, we're just gonna wait here in the hotel. You guys can go, me and my manager, we're gonna go to the yakitori place, yakitori place, uh, first to get like our table and stuff. So, <laughs> Tabby, trust me, bro. Yeah, SG trained me well. SG trained me. I mean, their, their airport, 100 out of 10. The Changi airport, I'm incredible. It's so good. Anyway, we go, me and my man go to the yakitori place. And I was like, okay, cool, yeah, I'm with my Manasan. And we're going to the yaki yakitori place. And this yakitori place was in like the ninth floor or something? The eighth floor or the ninth floor of a building? <laughs> and in my mind, I was like, huh? Huh? This, how do you even know this place? It's in, in the ninth floor of this building. So we go up the elevator. And I was I was expecting the uh, ninth floor yakitori place. No one's gonna go here. No one's gonna go to a freaking ninth floor to eat. But then I go inside. We go inside and it's it was full. There were so many people. And again, I was overwhelmed. My mind was overwhelmed by all the different people here. There were like people from the offices. There were like normal dripped out people. Saka! Saka! Thanks so much for being a marionette! Thank you, thank you! 
We're gonna be making you scuffets! I'm gonna be making a scuffet out of you, Saka! Thanks so much. Thanks so much for joining the marionettes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Look forward to your scuffet. We'll see. We'll see. <clears throat> so, yeah, we went to the yakitori place on the ninth floor. So many people. So many people. A lot of people! Then I was basically surrounded by Japanese people about to go out the elevator. Then we got a table and everything. And there, we got to a table. And I was so happy because in order to order, you just go through this iPad. You just choose through this iPad. And I just ordered. I ordered myself like a nice little latte with a bunch of cream on top. Um, but there was this nice little thing that I really wanted. To, I really wanted to order this. There was like strawberry milk. There was a nice looking strawberry milk that I really wanted to order. But you know, because I was like, you know, I'm, I'm an adult in Japan. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna order like a coffee. So I ordered an ice latte. And then after a few minutes, uh, we got me and Mane got some food. We got like, uh, you know, the chicken skewer thing with uh, with some vegetables in between the chicken. Um, so good. We got cabbage. You know, just literal cabbage was so good. We got edamame. Oh, so good. And then suddenly, they come. The others come. Gibby wasn't there. <laughs> Gibby wasn't there because they just, they escorted him back to his room and locked him inside. <laughs> so it was just Gerard, Shikamane, and Ruse that came up to the Yakitori. And that was the first time I met Ruse. Yeah, I met Ruse. Anyway, baby, Ruse, baby, baby. Yeah. And Gerard was there. And of course, they told the story of them meeting Gibby, right? And then, lo and behold, these freaking fools. Well, I'm the fool. But they order the strawberry milk. All of them order the strawberry milk. What's going on? I wish I could have ordered the strawberry milk. <laughs> First impressions? Now that the, that's the thing. Uh, I know people are gonna ask first impressions, and I was I was able to share a little bit, like last week. But first impressions are kind of difficult because they are exactly who they are. <laughs> They're exactly who I talk to every, who I've been talking to every day for the past four months or something. They are exactly who they are, just in front of me. Yeah. So it's hard for me to describe anything new, I guess. But I'm going to be like, Ruse. What's my first impression of Ruse? He's Ruse. <laughs> well, I guess there's a little bit, there's some difference. I guess he's really tall. I mean, he's already really tall. He, he He's taller than me, for sure. But then meeting him, tall. Tom. How about their drip? Uh, Ruse was still wearing his freaking jacket. Well, he was he was wearing a t-shirt inside though. He was not he was he didn't have his um, his man tits outside. You know, he was wearing a shirt. Um, but I guess he had he had a cool thing that was hanging off his belt, which had his Suica card and his hotel card, and I wanted one of those. Um, he was tall. He talked like Ruse. He moved like Ruse. He says Ruse things. <laughs> for Gerard, okay. For Gerard, it's a little bit different. I guess Ruse is just really is who he is. It's just really who he is. Now Gerard, you know Gerard, you get some kind of thing. You get you get like a an image of what he does actually does how he moves based on his voice, right? Um he's actually <laughs> um at least like the way he moves and stuff, he's how do I how do I word this? He's more reserved than I guess you'd expect. It's like it's like you know how you when you watch singers 
and they sing like this really high note or whatever and they're barely tired after singing that note they just do it casually stuff like that so yeah gerard just speaks really loudly just so casually he isn't he he doesn't like that he doesn't do any of that he's just he's just really still he's like ha 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 he came in he's just like that He's in like, he's in like, Wah! Wah! yeah. He came at OG. Jawado sama. Yeah. <laughs> but your body quiet, but voice loud. Exactly. Body quiet, voice loud. Like, you know, even, even just the way. He holds like a tray, walking around with a tray because we, we we went to some place where he had to you know use a tray for the food. He's just he's just he's just holding the tray just normally, just normally, just arms close to his body, tray, and just walking straight to the table, puts it down. I don't know how best to explain it. I don't know how best to explain it. But then he talks. He's like, <laughs> right. I don't know how best to explain it. But I guess that the way uh, you explain it there in chat, body quiet, voice loud. Exactly. Ruse? Ruse is body loud, voice loud. Yeah. Oh. Ruse? Ruse's volume is very loud. <laughs> it's also very loud. It just feels a bit softer than Gerard's because it's coming from a high place. <laughs> it's just coming from a higher place. <laughs> so so there's like there's like there's like some distance. Whereas Gerard, if he talks, it's, he's right in my ear. He's right in my ear. <laughs> It's like shouting from the top of a building. Yeah, yeah. Now, here's a funny thing. Here's a funny thing. When we were there at the Yakitori, we came up with... Uh, we came up with... Nicknames. <laughs> we came up with nicknames. I kind of forgot. I kind of forgot the nickname for Ruse. I, I totally forgot what the heck his nickname was. But we had... We had nicknames for... We had... The the main nicknames that stuck really were just for, to me at least, for Gerard and um, uh, Gibby. For Gerard, was my code name? I mean, people just call me O. It wasn't it wasn't any special, just O, right? Um, but for Gerard, <laughs> Gerard's name was just Mark. <laughs> we call Gerard Mark. <laughs> because, you know, Markiplier. You know? Mark. <laughs> uh, Ruse's nickname started with an R. I just forgot forgot what it was, but it was stupid too. It was it was it was stupid. Um Yeah, so he's called Mark. When we call him, it's like Mark. Mark! Right? <laughs> Most generic ass name. <laughs> Doxing Markiplier. Mark! 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 Then for for Gibby, it was funny because, you know, he was drunk, right? What happens when you're drunk? You vomit. Though I don't think Gibby vomited, but I was like, Garf! <laughs> so we got Mark and Garf. <laughs> Mark and Garf. <laughs> oh yeah, I think mine was Otto at one point. Auto, but people eventually just said, "Oh, <clears throat> Mark and Garf." Thanks for Hollow Fest Karaoke. Hey, thanks so much for the super. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. You know, Auto, like the guy in Final Fantasy 16, but it just became O. Church of O. So we got Mark, we got Garf, we got O. Damn, I forgot Ruse's one. Rar, Rar. Damn, I forgot. I forgot. But it was R, you know. We just <laughs> only Gerard's name was like 
<laughs> it was like M. <laughs> yeah, Luz Viminda. Luz Viminda was a uh, Ruse's uh, nickname at the airport. Luz Viminda. <laughs> ah. So yeah, we had nicknames. It was so fun. It was so funny. Um, for the for the Manasans, we we called them by their names. You know, we did we didn't call them Shikamane in public. You know, we just called them by their names. <clears throat> So that was fun. Uh, so I had the ice latte. Um, they had the strawberry milk. Hey, thanks so much for the super. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> Hideo san. Then, Manisan's doxed. <laughs> they're gonna be they're gonna be doxed if they're called Shikamane <laughs> on the train station. Shikamane. There's a, oh. That's Shikamane! Right. <laughs> uh, then... What else? What else? What else? What else we got on? Yeah, we ordered a bunch of food. A bunch of food. Um, Ruse was already like full at that time, so we just eating a bit, a little bit. Uh, me and Gerard were a bit more hungry. But Gerard ate so much that he was like, Oh, I'm full. I'm full. Now... Little did we know, little did we know, there were stones being formed inside his kidneys at this point. <laughs> there were little baby stones being formed inside his kidney. <laughs> um, we ate like, we ate the, you know, the chicken skewers, we ate the chicken skin, we ate edamame, we ate, we ate, there was like a super nice beef beef skewer thing was so good everything was so good everything was so good it's crazy <clears throat> I miss the fathers of the stones god damn it lethal stones <laughs> ah <clears throat> but yeah so Ooh, I burped inside after the yakitori, we went down the nine floors and we walked and we got back to the hotel. All right, we were walking back. We were walking back. And this is the time Shikamani was like, you should do the voice tweet. You should do the voice tweet. I was like, you're right. You're right, let's do the voice tweet. <laughs> And Ruse at that time was literally hiccuping. He was hiccuping so much. Yeah. So we we're like, hey, let's use that. We're just gonna hiccup anyway. Let's do that. Let's time. We 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 timed it exactly when he was when he was about to hiccup. So that was a real hiccup. That was real hiccups. It was like, Ooh. yeah. <laughs> so we timed it. We timed it. <clears throat> that was we did that on like the side of the road on the side of the road on the side of the I think it's a highway it's like a highway there was no one around us but we definitely weren't using our indoor voice I mean in, in, inside voices there a little a little but damn we were a bit loud at that point <clears throat> <laughs> so yeah we did that it was fun we did the voice tweet and everybody was like ah they're in Japan! And I was so happy. I am I was in Japan. Everything was cold. Everything was cool. Bruh! We're just in day one! Let me just get some water. Let me get some water. One second. All right, okay, okay. But I think this is the time where I can um, entertain some member questions. 
some member submitted questions about stuff in Xenokuni. <clears throat> let's see, let's see, let's see. These were submitted by the members of the Puppet Collection. Um, what does everyone the boy smell like? Here's one of the things that I was very surprised about. Not really surprised. Just not really unexpected. But you know, because it's a cold, it's a cold country. You know, no one sweats. No one is sweating. Yeah, no one's sweating. And everybody smelled good. Everybody smelled good. Now, I can't really place like the smells that I smelled, but everybody smelled good. Yeah, their perfume or whatever. Their cologne, if they were wearing that. Um, they all smell good. It's when, when, when they just walk in front of me, they just walk in front of me and they leave like a scent trail. I'm like, oh, whatever perfume that is, I need that. Yeah. <clears throat> Actually, everybody, even on the train, even outside Akihabara, everybody's just, it's either, it, it, it's either smells like perfume or it smells like detergent, you know? Whatever detergent people use or whatever. Describe them? It's hard! I can't... The only one I can, I can describe is Betel. It's a cream colon. The cream colon snack. The Sakura... The matcha and Sakura snack. That's how Betel smells like. Yeah. That's the only one I can describe at all. I, I don't know... I don't know any descriptors for smell. But, I can only describe smells if I like smell something similar. Yeah! <clears throat> but, everyone smelled nice. Everyone, everyone, eh, there's... There's nothing that smelled bad. Even the toilet smelled great! Because the toilets had like, auto deodorizers. So, I don't know what's going on there, but they figured it out. They figured the toilets out. 100%, 110%. The next thing you know, the toilets are going to be diagnosing diseases in Japan. They're going to be diagnosing whatever disease you have based on whatever thing you deposited, right? <clears throat> yeah, the auto deodorizer god tier. You're right. You're right. Yes, Japan smells like fresh powdery bamboo. <laughs> Psychoanalyzed by the toilets. Maybe in the future they will diagnose kidney stones before they happen. <laughs> but yeah, I can't, I'm sorry I can't really describe accurately. All I know is Beto smells like cream colon, the snack. So if you if you ever find yourself in Japan, go grab the cream colon snack and smell it and eat it, and you're like. That's Betel. That's Betel. Um, <clears throat> can I go talk to you again even, even if I can't speak English? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, so pronounce colon that way? No, the snack is colon. Like C-O-L-L-O-N. It's either colon or koyon or kolyon. Yeah. <clears throat> um, can you, can I go talk to you again even if I can't speak English? Yeah. Here's the thing. Here's the thing is that, um, Everybody was so cute in my meet and greet. Everybody was so nice and so fun to talk to. And like, I guess 70% of the people that I went, that went to the meet and greet were like Japanese. And every single one of them really tried their best to communicate to me in English, whether it be actually speaking in English or by printing out like what they want to say on a big like pad of paper or whatever. Or actually writing big letters on a big like sketch. I don't know if it's a sketch pad or something. Yeah. They were, they were so nice. They, were, they tried their best to like, you know, you know, it's, of course, it's not their first language, but they really, really tried their best to communicate to me in English. And what I really wanted them to know is that <clears throat> you can speak to me in Japanese, at least during the Hollow Expo uh, meet and greet, because we have like a live interpreter. Yeah, we have a live interpreter right next to us, which is honestly, whoa, I was like, whoa, 
like you're speaking and they're interpreting everything that you're saying in real time so whenever they get like whenever they say a few japanese words i can just hear the interpreter in my ear and be like okay so that's what you say oh cool cool now what i really wanted what i wasn't uh, expecting though is that they there wasn't an interpreter in the booth i guess so that's one of the difficulties is when i say something that maybe you know uh, they can't understand so i really try i really try my best to really enunciate my words and use you know more simple english <clears throat> because a few of them also were like please use simple english and it was okay of course of course <clears throat> Uh, they had interpreters for Holostars. Love that for everyone. Yeah! Oh, that's great. That's great. But here's my promise. I will learn Japanese. I will do my best to learn Japanese. So I can at least, you know, speak a little bit more. Um, uh, and hopefully you understand. Hopefully I don't say anything bad. I'm, I'm definitely gonna, gonna start learning. Um, <clears throat> I'm about, I'm about to like enroll in a Japanese class. Because here's the thing, I, I know I I know it's gonna be hard for myself to just self-learn Japanese. I need someone to like teach me. I need someone to be like, this is a structure for which you're gonna learn Japanese. So yeah. <clears throat> That's gonna happen soon. And hopefully by next Holo Expo, I'll be like, ha 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 ha! Uh Hajimimashite! <laughs> <laughs> yeah <clears throat> but don't want to spend money yeah I was like you know what business expense business expense it's gonna be worth it it's an investment for me now I wouldn't I will never pay for Japanese lessons if it's just for nothing <laughs> if I'm just gonna I'm gonna go on a vacation next year to Japan I will never take lessons, but you know, if it's to talk to the fans who you know who paid for the meet and greet ticket or meet and greet spot or whatever, and if it, if it means I can talk to you more, um, if I can say more things in the short amount of time, then heck yeah, that's gonna be worth it. You know, it's gonna be worth it. <clears throat> so, uh. Yes, so please, next Hall Expo, feel free to just speak in Japanese. <clears throat> the interpreter was also really nice, actually. Um, the interpreter... I told the interpreter right next to me, I was like, Okay, because when I talk to people in, you know, in person, I don't talk like this. I don't talk like, blah, blah, yeah, yeah, right? I talk in a more casual tone. I talk in a more... You know, something that won't get looks from everybody around the room. It's like, what the heck? That guy's pretending to be an anime character. I'm gonna be. T I'm not gonna be talking like that. I'm gonna be talking more, more casual. So I told the interpreter that I'm gonna. I was like, okay. So in a few seconds, I'm gonna be really loud. I'm gonna be really loud. My voice is gonna go really high. So please don't be surprised. <laughs> please don't be surprised. And they were cool about it. Um, she told me. She told me that she was like a Final Fantasy VII fan. So for like 15 minutes before the actual meeting, we were just talking. We were just talking about Final Fantasy VII. I was talking about Final Fantasy XVI. You know? Um, she was like an OG Final Fantasy VII fan. She played, played it on day one when it released when she was a kid or something. I was like, whoa! I was nervous. I was nervous before that. Before I was able to talk to her like that. <clears throat> But then I guess she broke the ice and we talked, we talked Final Fantasy and everything right until the very last second. And so when the first meet and greeter entered, I was like, ha, ha, I can do this. <clears throat> I can talk. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if she did like research. Um, if she did a like research on my streams or what I liked or something. First off, she asked like, oh yeah, she did say, she did say that. I watched like your stream the other day and you talked about this kind of like fictional place that you're from. Um, what is that place again? I was like, oh, that's South Elysium. And that's like a deserty area. That's like a bad land. We call it the Badlands. And she was taking notes. She was taking notes and stuff. And she had me write like South Elysium in her notebook. 
Then I checked like her, there was there were more notes. There were more and more more notes on top. And there were notes like Octavio, then the Japanese spelling of Octavio. Then I think there was like opulent, octatonic, operatic, puppeteer, or whatever, stuff like that. Then now there's South Elysium, and she was taking notes and everything. <clears throat> so I was like, whoa! Wow! That's pretty cool. That's really cool. Yeah, she was ready. She was re- ready. Yeah, each of us, each of us had like our own interpreter. And we each of us had our own room. Here's the thing: I was in the green room. You guys have seen the pictures, right? You guys have seen the pictures of the studio. I was in the green room. Uh, Toromane was like, you're the first person that's ever going to use this green room. <laughs> I was in the green room. It was it was like a really big, it was like, I don't know, 200 square feet? 200, 300 square feet or something? And I was the only one there. <laughs> and the interpreter and uh, Manesan was there. Uh, I know Gerard said when he was doing his monitoring talk or whatever that Shikamane would kick kick his chair when he said something bad or something weird or whatever. Heh! Not me. Not me. Mane, the Mane could have slept. The Mane could have slept. You know? I'm a good boy. I'm a good boy. <clears throat> uh, I was the dude that gave you a speed quiz to admit... Oh, hello! Yeah, you were in the meeting greet too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Two minutes was really, really short. I have to say, um, it feels like just where when we're we were just starting the conversation, then it just suddenly ends. You know. But that was fun. Thank you for the questions. <laughs> you you asked me. He asked me. Um, boobs, but boobs or butt. And <laughs> so here's the thing. I was right next to the interpreter. I was also right next to the Manasan. And I had to answer. Boobs are butt. And I did the thing. I was like, is there a third option? And I was like, armpits. <laughs> I didn't look at. <laughs> Then, after that point, I didn't look at the interpreter or my manasan ever again. I was focused. <laughs> I was focused on my screen. <laughs> I was like, oh no. Oh no. They hate me now. <laughs> ah. What can I say? What can I say? I only answer truthfully. Yeah, the interpreter can't look at you the same th- same ever again. <laughs> I was a good boy. I was a good boy. There were just some moments of w- weirdness. <laughs> ah, that was funny. Thank you for the questions. <laughs> so, next question here is. What's your favorite food you ate in Xenokuni? Uh, can you choose three kind of foods you really enjoyed? Uh, I guess the food I had there, I had the yakitori. I had the... You know what I really, really liked there? Was the curry... The curry chicken... Was it pork? It was a, It's either pork or chicken cutlet. Curry, pork, chicken cutlet. Rice. In Family Mart. Yeah, I like that so much. Uh, katsudon uh, with curry, curry katsudon. I don't know, but yeah, and from Family Mart. Here's a here's a thing. Here's a thing. Oh, thank you for the ten gifted. Thank you for the ten gifted memberships. Thank you, thank you. Here's the thing, is that the the katsu curry that I had in Family Mart is like is like on par with the katsu curry that I get in like legit Japanese restaurants here in South Elysium. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? Why is it so good? I bought that. I also tried this Kalpis... Kalpis soda thing. I don't know. I, don't, I just... 
I, I was just familiar with the word kalpis and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna buy that. It tasted like ice cream. I'm not sure it was soda, but it's ice cream. Yeah? So I had that and went to the nearby park and ate my food at the park. Now, I was here in the park eating my food. In the distance, I see a sakura tree, like a cherry blossom tree. And then the breeze, the cold breeze, you know, against my skin. Everybody around me was like having a fun time, walking around. There are couples on the left of me and they were just, you know, they were just sitting down and having a fun time, enjoying the park. And I was here with my katsu curry. It could make a grown man cry. I was like, I, I was, I was, you know, <clears throat> I was in a moment of introspection at that time. It's like, damn. I've, I've never had a moment like this in South Elysium. The parks here are not parkable. The parks here are not parking. There are so there are so few parks and they're not they're not they don't park. They're not inducive to parking. You go there, you go to a park, you walk around if you if you if you find a park. You go to a park, you sit down, and you're like, I'm going to die in the next 5 seconds if I don't go if I don't get out of here. <laughs> Literally going to die and melt. And disintegrate. So, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're gonna die because it's so hot. Why would you stay outside? You're just gonna die of heat stroke. Either that or you're gonna get stabbed. <laughs> gonna get stabbed or get mugged or something. <laughs> well, it depends on the location. It depends on the location. Um,. The park scenery gets bamboozled by corporate buildings. True, true as well, true as well. So, so really, I was I sat at that park for like an hour. I was eating my katsu curry. Everybody was having fun in that park. And I was just, wow. <laughs> I was like, I want to live here, man. I want to live here. Um... I don't know. I remember someone did say on Twitter, I did say like, Japan, how live Japan, right? Then someone said, uh, not, no, it's terrible or something. It's good to visit for a few weeks, but terrible to live in. And I'm like, in my mind, I was like, there's another place that is terrible to live in. <laughs> um, and it's South, <laughs> South Elysia. <laughs> There is another place that is worse. It's good to live in, good to visit. It's good to visit for a few weeks, but not good to live in. And that's South of the Yeah, I really I'm I'm really seriously considering like going. But there are a few things that need to be met. A few things that need to be met first before I really like start the process or something. Um, <clears throat> first off, 3D. There needs to be a reason for me to be in, you know, Japan. If I, if, go, if being there means I can do 3D more, like in the future when we finally get our 3Ds, maybe a year or two from now, um, I do want to be in a position where I can just 3D anytime. Because you, people have like their own 3D events, like 3D birthdays, 3D lives and right. 3D lives and stuff like that but the thing that but every 3D live also like invites different people for 3D as well so even if you have like one to two 3D events for yourself you get to do at least the JP senpais are getting to do you know the birthdays of their other sem of their other of the other people in Hall of Stars they can join this this guy's 3D they can join this other guy's 3D they, you know they, they do a lot of 3D even if they have only a few events for themselves. <clears throat> and honestly, I just want to be a Gorimane. <laughs> I also want to be a Gorimane in Axel's, in one of Axel's 3Ds. <laughs> That's a dream. That's a dream. So yeah, if 
when we get our 3Ds, 3Ds, that's when I'm gonna seriously really consider um, moving. Just because it makes sense from a career point of view, you know? <clears throat> it's not like we're gonna get a South Elysium. <laughs> South Elysium cover studio, right? Now, if I was in the US, then, you know, the new LA, I think there was going to be a, like an LA, was that LA? Or I misread that. I don't know where that is, but a studio for cover or something like that, right? If I was in the US, heck yeah, that's great. I can do more uh, 3D projects in, um, in the US studio, but I doubt there's going to be a studio. <laughs> in South Elysia. So it would make sense to live in Japan at that point. <clears throat> um, but I guess the biggest thing also is that now from the perspective of someone from like the US going to Japan, the, the expenses are probably going to be maybe around the same or a little bit lower. Are a little bit lower or maybe much lower depending on where you're gonna live but for us here in south elysium going and living in japan is just gonna be is gonna be more expensive so that's just gonna be that's just one thing one of the things that, that you know i need to think about but really so if i ever move to japan it's not because you know it's gonna be less expensive to live there it's more of a comfort it's more of a comfort thing you know <clears throat> It's more of a comfort thing. Um, comfort and career thing. So. Ah. Ah. And all of this, I thought while well, I was in that park eating my katsu curry from Family Mart and my kalpa soda. Really? If I could just go out to a park maybe once a week and just sit there? Damn. Damn. I never imagined I could possibly live a life like that <laughs> until now, until I was there, uh, until I was there with my katsu curry. Now Singapore, I also considered when I was there, the problem is it's also hot. <laughs> it's still hot. It's still hot. <laughs> That's the biggest problem. It's hot. So yeah. <clears throat> Having a life crisis during your Japan trip is mandatory. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> um, but yeah, if it makes sense, I will, I will move. If it makes sense, I'm gonna go through uh, everything to even get my pets there. If I can, if I can get my pets there. <clears throat> at least my good boy. At least Onion, and the cats, and my and my Julia B. God damn it. We'll see. We'll see. We shall see. <laughs> so, next, 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 next question. Oh, did you end up hiding scuffets at the expo after all? I can't die without knowing this. I looked around whenever I had time, but that was very little time. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to. I did ask Mane if I could. However, they said that it takes months to get something like that, you know, approved. Um, so I wasn't able to, unfortunately, unfortunately. Um, but I did, I did, I did a few things. I just signed the signed the things that you can sign. I did like I put the flower crown on my thing and stuff like that. But I can request now, though, Manesan. Can I put scuffits in Hollow Expo in next year's Hollow Expo? Request that right now. I'm gonna request it tomorrow. Because it's Sunday right now. They don't have work. <laughs> I'm gonna request it right now. <clears throat> so yeah, maybe next year. Maybe next year. You can get your own Little scuff it, little Hollow Expo exclusive scuff it. <laughs> How does it feel after meeting the JP Senpais? Bruh! It's it's been said so many times, but they're so fashionable! Why? They're so fashionable! 
I'm in my South Elysian fit. You know? It's just this. It's just this. It's my coat. And my clothes, which is pretty great. But it's not like... It's not like Japanese fashion. Japanese fashion is like, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. They got that. Some of them got that tech wear. You know? Some of them got, some of them got those, you know, really, really... Loose pants or something. Bruh. So cool. Um... Yeah, I think, I think, was it Miyabi Senpai who said this, who shared it, but uh, it was, <clears throat> our group was Miyabi Senpai, Izuru Senpai, me, Ruse, and Gold Bullet. That was our little group for Hollow Expo. <clears throat> that was a little group. Now here's the thing, I was very shy. I was very shy. I was very shy. Remember when I, when I talked to you guys that it takes me, it takes me three months to warm up to people. It takes me three months to warm up to people, right? But that's just on my side. That's on my side. Now, however, if you, if like, if you come to me and talk to me and stuff like that, I'm like, easy, you know, I'm like, yeah, 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 wow, well, thank you, yeah, right? But if, but if it's when it comes to me approaching people, it takes me three months. To be able to do that. To be able to just be like, Oh, you're so cool. Yeah, yeah, let's do something. Let's go out. And stuff like that, right? <clears throat> so that's why that's why you'll probably not hear a lot of uh maybe first impressions, I guess, from everybody with regards to me. Because I was very shy. Uh introvert? I'm the I'm an introvert introvert. I'm an introvert. Bro. Um But I think the the one that I really approached and I and uh, I was like I was like I'm going to I'm going to introduce myself to this guy. For sure. Just because just because um I've already met everyone, right? I've already met everyone in some capacity. Um in some, you know, in a more casual, in a more casual capacity, which is great. But there was this moment where there was this specific guy we were we were in like this room in this like uh, in this like break room or something like that, and this is the first time I met this guy, and it wasn't it wasn't really a super casual thing because you know we were kind of funneled in this room because we were gonna do the Hollow Expo uh, thing, but this is the first time I met this guy and that was battle. That was battle, because remember, I was able to meet everyone before battle. Battle was the last one I met um, from the Star's end. So when I saw Betel, I was like, okay, I'm not, I'm not just gonna, I need to introduce myself. I need to go to the introduce myself because otherwise I'm just gonna be in the background. He, he won't know me. He won't know that's me or whatever. So he was in the chair. I went to him. I tapped him and I put out my hand. I'm, go, I'm, I'm gonna shake his hand. I was like, Betel! Oh, Octavio! It's me, Octavio! Hey! Right. I it took it took a lot of courage. It took a lot of courage for me to do that. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, that took 100% of my courage. And I wasn't able to do that to the JP Senpai. <laughs> for the JP Senpai because you know, so many things were happening. <clears throat> so many things were happening, but I was able to talk to Ryo Senpai. I was able to hug Fuma Senpai. I was able to to hug uh, Tim Tema Senpai as well. I was able to say hi to Oga Senpai. Uh, I was able to say hi to Miyabi Senpai. Uh, Izuru Senpai. Um, everyone else was a blur. Everyone else was a blur, but I was in close proximity to a few people. And I, I was in close proximity to... Oh wait, I was also able to talk, I mean, say hi to Gama Senpai, uh, Aruran Senpai, uh, who else, who else, who else, who else? Yeah, but every everything was just happening too fast. Everything was just happening too fast. Everybody, there wasn't really a moment where we could really introduce ourselves. Um, 
All I know is that we were all in one room at some point. <laughs> but it's, I was so happy, for example, Tema Senpai. Tema Senpai really just went out and was like, Hey, I'm Tema Senpai. I'm Tema. Who are you? So we were in a line. Like, Gold Bullet. I'm Gold Bullet. Hey. Then Gerard, I'm Gerard. Hey. Then I'm Octavio. Oh. Right? That was so cool of him. What the heck? Why is he so cool? I could never do that. At least not right now. I can never, I can never be just like, Hey, I'm Tema. Then everybody just introduces themselves to you. He's so cool. So happy got to meet and hug everyone. Not jealous at all. Zero jealous. No jealous feelings. <laughs> but thank you for the super. Thank you. Thank you. Um. <clears throat> but yeah, one of the things, one of the things I... Uh, I was going to talk more about this in Menshi. And I guess I can talk about it a little here, but I'm going to save more for the Menshi. Is that one of the things I really want to make a goal of is next year, if, you know, if we all meet again next year, uh, I'm going to try and be more, I guess, more present. Try and be more present, you know? Uh... That's that's difficult. It's a difficult thing, you know, social anxiety, introvertedness and everything. But that's just something I need to work on. But the thing is, I feel like I feel like I could everything was just too fast this week. I feel like if things could just slow down, if I spend more time there, if we do more projects there together, like the karaoke and stuff, then that's when, you know, I can just naturally just get to know people more. But that's one of the things I really want to improve next year. So if I, so one of the things is if I learn to speak Japanese more, then you know that'll add to my confidence in talking to them and talking to everybody, right? <clears throat> Social anxiety sucks, but it's real, and we shall overcome it. We shall overcome it. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Mm. Boo, 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 boo. About the gifts you got for your senpais. Any special reason for what you chose to give them? Actually, it was the first time you're in Japan and your first time meeting them and introvertedness and tight schedules. Yes, exactly. Just all of that all together. Um, but yeah. But my crowning achievement was literally to just, hey, Gavis Battle! It's me, Octavio, and shake his hand. That was my crowning achievement. That was me. That was me trying my best. <laughs> The others I just met casually, like for example, Altair, I met him like in the break room. I met him in the elevator. You know, Shinri, I just talked to him just casually and stuff like that. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah. Next up is this question, what gifts did he get for his senpais? Basically, I gave him coffee. <laughs> I gave, uh, not all of them. I was able to not give all of them coffee, but I was able to give coffee and the coffee that I gave to them was from different parts of South Elysium. Yeah, it's from different parts. I just I just found a source where they like pack assorted assorted coffee. And from different parts that are South Elysian coffee. You know, like uh what was that? Sagada? Sagada Barako. Um What was the other one? The other one was just hazelnut. <laughs> then there was something else. Um, but yeah, it's basically South Elysian coffee that you can, you can more or less get here in South Elysium or SEA. Yeah. Um, so that was good. I gave one to the, Man I gave some to the Manasans. I gave some to the boys. Um, not to all the Tempest boys, unfortunately, because I was, uh, at the time I met all of them, I didn't bring my bag with them. Also not all of the JP boys, because I gave... I gave the coffees mostly to the ones that were in the same bus as me. And some of the staff in Manisans as well, I gave them the coffee. Uh, I didn't bring a lot just because I was scared that the customs might might throw it away. So I bought like, I brought like 20, 20 something, 20 something packs of coffee, um, of assorted coffees. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> I was scared that they might take it away, but apparently they, they did not. So I was able to give around 20 to different people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So coffee. That was cool. Uh, let's see, let's see. What's your most embarrassing moment during the Zeno Kuni arc? Most embarrassing moment? Yeah, omiyage. That's the that's a thing Haka told us that we should do omiyage. Yeah. Haka twerked at every room and cover building. Yes, it's true. Um, he twerked even we we even went inside the room that's like super soundproof, really soundproof. Um, we went inside there, and just talking there, there was no echo, no echo at all. You, you. <laughs> You really appreciate how much how much echo there is everywhere else when you're inside that soundproof room. <laughs> and Haka was twerking everywhere. Haka was twerking everywhere. One day, I'm gonna record there. Just you wait. Just you wait. I'm gonna record in that room. <laughs> it's gonna be cool. Yeah, they test. <laughs> now we went in groups, right? We went in groups, and I think Gerard went in with Flayon and everything like that. And they went inside the room, into the soundproof room, and we closed the door. Me and Hanka, we closed the door and everything, sealed. It. And then after a few seconds, we opened it up, and it was like, "Did you hear us? Did you hear us?" We're like, no, we heard nothing. It was like, "Oh, good thing," because we said some really vile shit <laughs> inside. I was like, "Okay." <laughs> okay, they really tested it out, huh? They tested it out. It worked. We heard nothing. That is lost media now. <laughs> what they said is now lost media. No one knows what they said. Only the man up there knows what they said. The man in heaven. <laughs> ah. So, most embarrassing moment during Xenokuni arc? I guess one of the most embarrassing moments are basically in the combinis. It's just it's just in the combinis. It's just every interaction I have with all the cashiers embarrassing. I don't know what they're saying. Oh, I remember I was I was buying something at a combini and Haka was in the teller like the cashier next to me and the 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 guy said something. I was like, "Uh, uh sorry?" And Haka was like, oh, he's asking if you want a bag. I was like, oh, no. no. Um, I, I really wanted to say sumimasen, but I really locked up. I was like, sorry? Pardon me? <laughs> yeah, basically anytime I'm in company and I need to buy something, embarrassing. Embarrassing. Fukuro atatame. Right. Haka bought me ice cream. Haka treated me to ice cream. Me and Haka, we got the ice cream inside the, you know, the kind of the jelly pack, the jelly thing that you can suck. Hey, I got something from Haka Senpai. He gave me ice cream. He bought me ice cream. Yeah, yeah. The coolest and the cutest senpai. You're right. He got me ice cream. Though, Haka gave me ice cream. You know what Altair gave me? Hot pot. So, Haka still has some leveling up to do. As a senpai. <laughs> hey, Vizodi, thanks so much for the gifted membership. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, Altair got got us a hot pot at one point. But damn, when am I when am I gonna tell the story about that? Jesus, there's so many things to to say to talk about. Um next thing, next thing here. Um next question. I saw a cosplay at the expo. Do you like cosplaying? Do you know this cosplayer friend? What? I did see the cosplayers though. Two of the cosplayers were were in the meet and greet. The um Kamino Mani Mani cosplayer? The Kami no Mani Mani uh, in the Tavi outfit, in the Tavi cosplay. They were in my meet and greet. They were so sweet. They were so nice. They were so kind. 
Then also the one in the maid outfit was so nice to talk to as well. Everyone was so nice to talk to. What the heck? Oh. Those meeting greets are fun. Uh, thank you for the gifted membership. KGL, thank you, thank you. People who got the gifted outfit, uh, gifted outfit, gifted membership, please say thank you, thank you. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I was so, I was so happy that the people who cosplay, uh, cosplay me were able to get into the meet and greet. That was so fun. Um, one of them taught me Cantonese. Damn, I, I forget, I forget the word. What was the word? Basically, what they taught me was something like, you are cute. You are cute. Uh, then, yeah, there, there were some that, there were some that kind of were forgetting to take a picture. I was like, let's take a picture. Let's take a picture quick. Don't forget. Let's take a picture. Hey, thank you so much for the gifted membership. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. There were some, uh, it was so cute when some of them were like, actually printed out the expressions they wanted me to make um uh they actually printed out like please do this expression please do this expression as well please do this and i did it i did all of them i did some extra too <laughs> thank you for the gifted membership chami thank you chami one of the one of the people who went to the meeting great thank you so much for gifted membership thank you thank you thank you for visiting me as well <clears throat> so I did the expressions and everything. It was so fun. People took a lot of pictures. Ah. I wish there was more. Honestly, I was so nervous at the fact that we're giving me like I think there was twenty five or something, twenty five uh, meet and greets uh, slots. And before everything, I was so nervous because oh man, that's twenty people. Twenty people. That's a lot of people to talk to. But after everything, I was like, what? Was that 20 people already? Huh? That felt like three. That felt like three people. Thank you for the gifted membership, Grace. Thank you, thank you. It felt like three people. I wanted more. I could do that for like five hours, 10 hours, you know? If it meant a lot of the Octopussy, the puppets, can get in into the meet and greet. <laughs> But yeah, that was just two minutes per person. Need more! Need more minutes! <laughs> um, funny enough, there was even someone from South Elysium. <laughs> there was even someone from South Elysium who went there. That was amazing. That was great. Um, from Hong Kong. Where else? Where else? Where else? Germany? Yeah. From all over. That's crazy. Did you get to talk in South Elysian with them? I tr I said I tried to talk in South Elysian. I said a South Elysian word. Word. And they were like, sorry, I'm English era. <laughs> I was like, okay, fine. Easy. Yeah, sorry, I'm English era. <laughs> But that's good. That's fine. Now I'm now I'm wondering. They were so sweet though. They were so great. Um, now I'm wondering if there was ever like a South Elysian meet and greet. Would I would I have to would I have to talk in South Elysium as well? I guess. I guess. You know. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. <clears throat> Hopefully. Hopefully we get a, uh, you know, a South Elysian convention to go to. For the meet and greet too, I was so nervous too, but thank you for my life and for being so patient and nice. I think uh, I forgot to do the hand sign. Oh, honestly, um, I didn't have the hand sign asset. <laughs> it was on their computer. It, it wasn't there. It's only on my computer. I need to figure that out in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, thank you for the membership too, Riri. Thank you, thank you, Rini, Rini. Yeah, I need to. I guess I need to bring a USB or something. But I don't know. I've no. I don't know if they'll accept that. Maybe like no, your USB has South Elysian viruses. <laughs> so we'll see. 
We'll see. That was my first meet and greet. Now I know how it goes. Um, hopefully I can get the uh, hand sign. The hand sign in there in the future. <laughs> no. No one did the hand sign. Which is honestly okay. But next next meet and greet. Honestly okay because I didn't want to be like Oh, we're, we're, let's do the hand sign. I didn't want to be like, oh no, I don't have my hands. I don't have my hands today. So that was great. It was great. Everyone didn't do the hand sign. <laughs> yeah, maybe a 3D in the future as well. Yes. But yeah, let's see. Let's see. Um. Oh, it's all combini questions again. The freaking. The the Katsukari was the one I really loved. Um, there was a lot of tea though. The drinks are mostly tea. What's going on there? <laughs> Did you bring the scuffets anywhere? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I the scuffets were always in my always in my bag. They were always in my bag. But I was scared to bring them out in public just because um, it was it was always told. Uh, Every time they always say to us that it's, it's dangerous. It's dangerous if you give, you know, anybody information about where you are, what you're doing, or anything like that. So I'm like, Ugh. <clears throat> I want to be on the safe side. I didn't want to bring out the scuffets in public and be like, ah, no, that's him. Then I get stabbed. <laughs> I get, I get nabbed by the authorities, you know. But you were in my bag the whole time. Yeah. What I really wanted to do was I guess it I guess it wouldn't work. It really I I couldn't even post it anyway. If I have like the boys hold to the scuffets. Yeah. We'll see. Maybe next year. Maybe next year. When I have more time. I'll see. I'll see what we can do with the scuffets. Maybe I'm more confident. <clears throat> yeah, he stabbed Oshino Costa. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, prone to be doxxed. I, I can't be sure that anybody... I mean, especially because it's freaking Hollow Expo weekend. I just have to assume that anybody around me might be a fan of Hollow Live and Hollow Stars, you know? <laughs> Ooh... Save for Transpo Roads Urban Design. If there's one thing there that you can magic into existence here in South Elysium, what would it be? Save for Transpo Roads and Urban Design. <clears throat> I mean, you did, I, I, I wish you could have said save for Transpo Roads Urban Design toilets. But you know what? Toilets, easy, easy, easy answer. I'm not going to say that. Um... But yeah, what I really like actually is that the sidewalks are really, really wide. You're right. You're right. The sidewalks are really, really wide. Actual working trains, you're right as well. Um, <clears throat> public transpo, of course. This is this is what I did not expect. I I think I said this already, but at least Tokyo, at least the place where we were in, is a very, very wide. It's very wide. Holy crap! The the time you get from one street to the other via like a um a crossing, pedestrian crossing, it takes so long to get to the other side. Oh, one thing. Also, it's a uh, longer like walking times. <laughs> you know the you know the green light when you can walk across the street? Longer longer walking times here in South Elysium. Because sometimes Sometimes it's literally just up for three seconds. You need to have crossed. You need to have crossed the street for uh, within three seconds. My God. Um. Uh. What else? Also, like the easy ordering of food. Like there's there are literally restaurants with like a screen outside, where you just press your order and everything. Use your card to pay. Then they give you like a number. Then you get inside and you get your ramen within three seconds. You don't even need to talk to anybody. Yeah, you just order outside. You just tap things outside. Yeah. 
Stuff like that, you know? But I guess if you put like a screen outside, you know, maybe people will just take them down and just steal it. <laughs> Here in South Elysium, you know, you know. So maybe it wouldn't work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or if you put like an iPad for you to order, maybe people will just take them. Take them out of the restaurant and take it home. <laughs> um, so. Ah, oh, it's so different. It's so different. It's so it's so crazy there in Japan that that this thing where you there's like a sling that you can attach to your phone. And you can use your phone like you can sling your phone over your shoulder like a bag. And there's literally one like one girl who had her phone like behind her. It was just hanging at her back. You can see the phone and everything. It's there. It was hanging on her back. You can just do that. And no one would steal it. I could never as well. I could never. But it's one of the accessories that you can buy. It sounds one of, one of the accessories you can buy. I mean, one of the merch that you can buy, like from Final Fantasy VII merch and Kingdom Hearts merch, is like this smartphone sling that you can just attach to your phone and just carry it like a bag so I guess people do that there I guess people just do that you just put it you just sling it around your shoulder yeah <clears throat> um I would have bought that but I would have bought that if I lived in Japan I wouldn't do that here at all <laughs> I, I can never just have my phone out in public. Anywhere. Not even indoors. <laughs> um, let's see. What, what else? What else? What else is here? What other questions are here? <laughs> Souvenirs I'm gonna show in a separate stream. Um, a Menchi stream, like because there are gonna be pictures and stuff like that. Um But we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, even in Singapore. Even in Singapore, people just leave their phones on the table. Really, people leave their phones on the table to get food. To get the food that they ordered. They just leave it there. What's happening? I'm the guy that's like, I'm gonna steal that. <laughs> it's my South Elysian jeans that's like, oh, oh, oh. It's an unattended phone. <laughs> uh, I'll I'll really submit a new question here. Were were you anywhere else besides Tokyo? If not, I'll keep bringing your expo stand to other places for the time being. No, um, don't forget you wanted to show us your banger Japan photos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was only in Tokyo. I wasn't able to get I was I wasn't able to get anywhere else. Just in Tokyo, I really didn't have time. <laughs> That's <laughs> that your jeans activated. <laughs> God damn it. Honestly, that's just a that's just a thing that just triggers in my mind here and there. I'm like a phone on her back that you can just grab? <laughs> There's a phone unattended on the table? No one will know. No one will know. <laughs> How will they know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> saw this. Yeah, I saw the Skyrim steal button. <laughs> Damn, the voices though. Good thing I didn't give in to the voices. Oh, you know what Gerard did? Gerard saw. Wait, Gerard. When we were when we had that failed ATM thing, right? We were going to the hotel. Gerard found one yen on the floor, on the street, and he took it. He took it. So for a full night, Gerard had one yen to his name. <laughs> he had one yen to his name. So. <laughs> uh, so that's great. He survived in Japan with one yen, guys. One yen. Um, it seems that the term bidet is a very specific watch in Japan. Another one's wondering why he's used the word washlet to refer the device's system. Hazukashi. Yeah, that's what I realized too. 
I was watching Gerard's uh, talk. I mean, expo tour. It was so funny when he mentioned the bidets and people were like, what? What did he say? What did he say? Then they were like, washlet, washlet. <laughs> it's, it, uh, I remember the moment. Um, everyone was quiet. And the people they were interviewing were like trying to, to just trying to explain what he was saying. And he was like, oh, sh 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 sh. then the, the, the girl was like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> then it's so funny. Then suddenly Washlet and everybody's, oh, oh, Washlet. Yeah. Um. Not me. I mean, I tried both. I tried both anyway. And I'm not quite sure what the difference is. Um, but they both work, I guess. <laughs> yeah, because I, I saw there were two modes. And I was like, two modes? One has like a, uh, a different icon and the other one has a different icon. Then I used the first one. I was like, mm, okay, okay, mm -mm -mm -mm, good. Then I used the second one. I was like, what? It's it's kind of the same, but also not. Oh, also one the the other one had an oscillator. So aside from so when you press it once, it does the it does the function is the washlet function, I guess washlet function. And then if you press it again, it oscillates. So it does circles. <laughs> it does little circles. So well, that was fun. <clears throat> How can you be? That's for the front. I don't know. It doesn't really hit like super. F uh, <laughs> we're not gonna talk too much about that. <clears throat> okay. But anyway, I tried both, and they were both worked. Both worked. Just had to do a little bit of repositioning for each. Just have to do a little bit of re repositioning. But they both work, you know. Now, before, before, here's the thing, before Japan, uh, you should be studying one for the front, one for, thank the first two, <laughs> yes, yes, that's what I learned now. That's what I know now. Before Japan, you know, here in South Elysium, there are still places with those kinds of washlets, right? There are places like that, especially this, like the, some Japanese places, they have that kind of like washlet. And because I don't know anything about washlets and bidets, I usually choose the one that's labeled bidet. You know? Because that's what I know. It's called bidet. So I chose the bidet option. But now I know I should be choosing the other one. <laughs> now I know. Thank you, Japan, for giving me that knowledge. <laughs> uh... You live, you learn. Exactly, exactly. Now I know. Washlet. Washlet. Um. Oh, yeah. Karaoke. Uh, there's a question here about the karaoke. Let me just give more details about the karaoke, I guess. Is in the moment we weren't allowed to say that we were in a karaoke room. <laughs> Um, one thing that the man is told us, don't say that you're in a karaoke room, right? Uh, and he thinks that's just, you know, maybe because you you aren't supposed to do that in the karaoke room, and you you know maybe also for safety reasons as well. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we were we were in a karaoke room, yeah. Uh, so we weren't allowed to say that. And I did suggest, I also suggested like at the beginning, can we use the karaoke machine and just capture, capture the sound of that instead? So we can use the karaoke mics and everything. Um, but apparently we don't have the, the perms to the specific like karaoke, karaoke system they have. I think it's called joy sound or something like that. Yeah, we don't have perms for that. <clears throat> we only have perms for specific specific sources of karaoke tracks and the machine the one straight from the machine nope we don't have perms for it. 
So we really had to use my laptop and everything. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we weren't able to sing Bloodhounds because Bloodhounds wasn't available in Carafun. <laughs> so we used Carafun, right? We used Carafun. Um, Bloodhounds wasn't on Carafun, and I wasn't able to find or download the instrumental we have for Bloodhounds. And also because um, some of the boys were like, we need like we need the, the lyrics to light up so we know like the timing and everything. And you know, valid, valid. <clears throat> I didn't want them to sing anything they weren't comfortable with singing live. So we weren't able to do Bloodhounds. We wanted to do it though. If we could have used the machine, we would have done Bloodhounds. Then, um, so we did that, the whole karaoke and everything. We got a noise, we got a noise warning. <laughs> we got a noise warning and everything was fine. But, I had to I had to go around this while I was in Japan, but now I can say it is that afterwards we did more karaoke. We did karaoke for like the next two hours or something. Armist karaoke with Manesans. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh yeah, Ruse represent Armist at the Tempest karaoke. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um so we did sing Bloodhounds. I actually have a video here. Uh I guess I can't post it because we're using the audio from the karaoke machine. So that video is just gonna be mine forever. <laughs> uh, then we also sang, I sang a bunch of Disney songs. I was so happy. I was so happy. I was doing, I was doing with the Manisans with some Disney songs. Uh, we sang like part of your world. I also sang into the unknown. Um, Ruse sang the Ursula song. Yeah, a whole new world. They do it. We do it. In the whole new world. Ruse sang the Ursula song. The not to get the, 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 the yeah that song. I'm not gonna sing it. Mm, yeah, poor unfortunate souls. Yeah, yeah. Um, what else? What else? We also, I mean, they also sang other songs. Even Gibby and Gerard sang some songs. Some Japanese songs as well. Then we had one last song. We had one last song, one last song to do before we were going get, to get kicked out. And it was my turn. It was my turn. You know what I sang? Forget. You know what I sang? Which probably, which probably was very inspiring to me too. And just, and just a nice like cap off to my to our karaoke experience is that I sang uh, Stellar Stellar by uh, Suisei Suisei Senpai I sang Stellar Stellar in a karaoke in Japan yeah brah that was so fun I was like brah I was getting emotional inside I was like I'm in Hollow Stars I'm singing a Hollow Live production song in Japan in a karaoke in Japan in a karaoke in Japan so I sang Stellar Stellar for sure and that was a nice little ending to our little karaoke session <laughs> oh, I love that song so much I love that song so much that song like inspired so many things from me Ugh, especially when I was able to finally you know Get in to Hollow Stars. Such a good song, right? Such a good song. Ugh, I hope I hope one day I can make a song as good as Stellar Stellar. <clears throat> I love it so much. But yeah. We did we did more karaoke after our own karaoke. I wish I could have Ah! I wish I could have joined the Tempest karaoke. Oh my god. I remember they were like they put the invitation on Discord. Guys. If you want to join our Tempest Karaoke, feel free to join. And Ruse was going to join. Um, and I was like, no, FOMO is real. I want to sing so bad. I got the big FOMO. Got the big FOMO. Maybe next year. Maybe next year. Ruse had to sing Bloodhounds alone. Ah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, Gerard got lost. <laughs> uh, next year. 
next year. Manesan, please reserve a studio room for us as early as now. <laughs> as early as now, Manesan. Whatever date Hollow Expo is gonna be, please reserve us a studio. We're gonna do a freaking studio karaoke. How about that? That's gonna be a revenge karaoke in the studio with studio equipment and everything. It's gonna be cool. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> reserve it now. <laughs> Hopefully, there isn't a Taylor Swift Tortured Poets Department world tour going on at that time. Because if not, then bye bye, full armist karaoke. Bye bye. <laughs> Even if you pay me to be there, I won't. <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see. Um, sneak peek of the karaoke with the senpais. Were you nervous? Oh man, I was very nervous. Me and Haka were kind of nervous. <laughs> I was hanging on to Haka. I was like, Haka, help! But then I realized it was also like Haka's first time as well. Not really first time he already did an off collab karaoke, but this is like the first, like, it's gonna be in Hollow Expo, you know? So I was like, ah! So we actually saw in real time, we actually saw their 3D in real time doing everything. Yeah, that was so fun. Before, before the actual like event, they were actually talking to us. Like through the like our weird holographic forms, they were just they were just taught. I think Izuru did his did his hip hip swaying thing in front of us. He did it. I saw it in first person. I saw it in real time in front of me. He did the hip swaying thing. Yeah, it was real cool. Um, it was it was deadly. It was deadly. Uh. <laughs> and I don't know if it's heard in the video or in the in the actual uh, stage itself, but we were also we were also doing the uh, 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 uh. <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't sing. I couldn't like sing the parts, like the ad libs of the songs, because I didn't know the songs that they were singing. Um. But at least I was able to do that. Uh, uh. I know I knew Gorenge. The others I didn't know. <laughs> well, some of the others, most of them I didn't know. I'll I'll know them in the future. We'll see. Um, me and Haka also practiced the Ima Mune ni Todoita. That was fun as well. Um, that was so fun. Ah. Next year. Next year. I wonder if next year it's gonna feature like the Altair and Axel. Probably. Maybe. Because they're in 3D. Right? Maybe. Then Ah! Maybe next next year I'll be there, like in 3D. Ah! <sighs> I, I was so inspired after the whole Hollow Expo thing. It's so inspiring. Uh, especially seeing the JP boys. Especially seeing them. You know, knowing that they've been doing things. Doing this for like, how many years now? Five years? Four years? Five years for some maybe. Four years for some. Three for some. And I'm literally just four months in. Just four months in. <clears throat> I'm baby compared to them. Almost five. Yeah, almost five years. That's that's very very respectable, you know. <clears throat> so they've been. This is this is you know, Hollow Stars has been. They've been Hollow Stars for five years, almost five years. And I know now how busy we get, how busy we get with all the projects and all the stuff. And aside from that, the streaming and everything. Have they? And they've just been doing everything being freaking idols as well 
we ha we aren't like totally completely idols yet because we don't have our 3Ds and our concerts and all our you know our 3D lives yet. But it's it's so busy. But imagine it for them, right? It's so cool. Uh, suerte ng kuya nakita hita ni. <laughs> saw the thigh. I see. I saw Izuru's thighs. <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> One day, one day, and that's why I did announce this maybe in the last stream on the matcha stream or whatever that I was I was gonna do a hollow live production karaoke, <clears throat> you know, just as like a tribute to everyone that came before me, you know, to everyone that was here doing all the things, doing all the idle things, making content, making music before me, before I was here. Um, yeah, so this is gonna be my tribute to them, my, all my senpais, all the senpais from stars to live, ID, and live, EN, JP. Yeah, <clears throat> I'll try to include as many songs from everyone as I can, as I can get perms for, at least. You know, ah, it's so fun, it's so fun. Let's see, so literally, most of these songs I'm learning from scratch. <laughs> I'm learning from scratch. I'm now learning Find It. Oh, well, I've already finished learning Find It. I know how to sing it now. And some other songs. All of them. Most, most of them. I'm learning right now. So from now until that, when that karaoke happens, I'll be learning all of these songs. <laughs> uh, next, let's do a few more questions. A few more questions. Um... <laughs> mm. It's mostly food. I burped again. I burped again. <clears throat> oh, that's a meet and greet question. What What are your thoughts about my good search in Tavia? <laughs> Ah, this, I love it. I love it. Does ube suck? Ube suck? I don't like ube. I mean, I can eat ube, or as Beto says it, ube. <clears throat> I can eat ube, whatever, right? But you know how it's always served as halaya? Halaya or something? You just eat it straight up. Like from a spoon, from a from a little platito, you eat the friggin' ube from a platito, from a you lick your spoon or whatever. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> I mean, I can eat it. It's nice. It tastes. It tastes sweet. I guess. But eh. Then, then you have it in Halo Halo as well. You know you're enjoying the you're enjoying the leche flan. Mm, nom, 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 nom. You're enjoying the little the little circular things, the the, the jelly, little gelatin. And then there's like freaking ube stuck to the side of the cup. Okay. Nom, 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 nom. Then they they put like ice cream in the Halo Halo as well. Then you find oh it's ube ice cream. Nom, 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 nom. <clears throat> you don't like taro either? Yeah. I've always tried, you know, you know, in these milk tea places or whatever, they have also have they have like taro drinks as well. I tried. I tried them like ah. <laughs> Do you know the conflict is there with every food take? I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, it's good, I guess. But and everybody for some reason everybody loves it. Everybody's like if you if you find yourself in Baguio, bring take home good shepherd, great shepherd, I don't know. Good shepherd, great shepherd and you eh, okay. And then you you buy it, it's expensive, then you take it home and you eat it, you eat it from a you stick you stick the ube to your platito and put it there and then like uh, you just eat it with your spoon and eh. Okay. <clears throat> It 
it's like a skid mark on your platito. <laughs> ah. Let's see, let's see. Other questions, other questions here. <laughs> Skill issue? <clears throat> Bagyo to get thy firm's lost. You know what I like from Bagyo? Kulangot. Heck yeah. Now that's what I like. Kulangot. Come on, this is Zinokuni. This is not a Bagyo episode. This is Zinokuni. Kulangot. See? <laughs> you get firms again. <laughs> yeah, Sundut Kulangot, I guess. Sundut Kulangot. I love that. And also the grilled squid. Mm -mm -mm. Grilled squid in Mines View Park. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let's see. Oh, uh, I guess there's no more questions. There's a lot of questions, but did you take a lot of photos? I did take a lot of photos. I'll be showing it in Menshi. Uh, speak your truth. Hey! Thank you for the super. Thank you. I am speaking my truth. I speak my truth every day. Um... Most unforgettable memory when you met the Holostars boys? Most unforgettable memory. Most unforgettable memory. Hmm. Like the Holostars boys. The actual Hol- Everybody. Hmm. I think it might be during the tour. During the tour of the studio. Just because all of us were there and we were tour we were all touring the studio for the first time. I guess save for uh Altair and Axel. Um and that's when, you know, I was just able to casually talk to Shinri, to Haka, uh, to Battle, to Flayon. I mean Flayon, me and Flayon had a moment at the Square Enix Cafe. You know, to Altair Axel in a way. Just, just little by little, here and there. <clears throat> oh no! And that, and actually also, also the hot pot. Yeah, the hot pot. The hot pot that Altair treated us to. That was nice as well. Um, I think everyone was there except for Gerard and Gibby. Because I think Gerard was was dying. Gerard was dying at that point. And Gibby, Gibby already ate a lot during that day. So he, he didn't have room for a hot pot. So I think all of us were there. Yeah. Except for Gerard and Gibby. And we had a hot pot. It was great. Then afterwards. Oh yeah. Afterwards we, we went. All of us went to a kind of like arcade slash train game place and we played the taiko drums thing and we played the taiko drums some got some crane games we played mario kart uh like off like actual mario kart with a with a chair and wheel and everything four players um then after we went to con we went to the combini for ice cream and that's when haka bought me the ice cream and everything Hey, yeah, that was fun. It was really fun. That's like that feel. That feels to me like a quintessential Japanese experience. Hot pot, train game, arcade. Like who even goes to arcade these days? Apparently, apparently Japan. Everybody goes to a freaking arcade. Then kombini. Right. Oh, that was so fun. It was so fun. I want to go back. I want to go back. So much. <clears throat> I want to stay longer. I want more more time to be able to, you know, kind of warm up to them and talk to them. To everybody. Even the mani sons and stuff. Uh. Oh. But I think the really, the really, one of the really most... I guess the third, the third unforgettable experience is when after our fancy buffet dinner, 
was we all just went outside and chilled by this plate by this by this place overlooking a bridge <clears throat> overlooking a bridge and water there was like a body of water and, br- and bridge we were looking at uh you said a lot of nihongo dekinai moments but did you have any sweet cool nihongo jozu moments oh yeah i i had like the adatame hi fukuro hi that's it that's it <laughs> then they added then after i said that they added one more question i was like uh, uh, i don't know i don't know this quest i don't know what you're saying the girl thought i was a local because of, of how expertly and masterfully i said hi and she asked something one third question i was like Ugh. i don't know what you're saying but i do want chopsticks with that uh chopsticks chopsticks and she got the chopsticks then she put everything in the plastic and i got it but yeah uh that's my nihongo jozu moment it was it was not 100% nihongo jozu though <laughs> it was almost 80% there 80% but yeah we were at this bridge um and this is the moment where everybody was more or less kind of uh, i guess introspective is a term uh everyone was in their own little groups and everybody there were some people moving between different groups and stuff like that but at this moment <clears throat> it was this was a weird moment for me because leading up to that moment during the tail end of that buffet is something was happening in south elysium that i had to attend to on my phone um so at the tail end of the buffet i i was i was stuck to my phone i needed i needed to you know do something i needed to text some things to some people in south elysium it's it's a personal thing but that definitely kind of dampened kind of my mood a bit because i can't be 100% like in the moment <clears throat> it's like south elysium was calling me back something like that then uh i think ruse ruse even noticed actually at this point this thing from south elysium that's been going on really was was messing with my with my being in the moment really uh many times at this point i find myself people were actually talking to me and didn't even notice and i was like oh god damn it ah i'm messing it up i'm messing it up just because i have this thing that plus my social battery was going zero my social battery at that day was going zero and there was something else happening on my phone happening by the sound so, like, ah. <clears throat> so when we went out to that bridge thing is I was pretty frustrated and also zero social battery so i was just leaning on the railing and just looking at the bridge right everybody was talking to someone on the side everybody was talking to someone everything then at this time i was like god damn it i'm messing it up again i'm 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 just not present again you know and this th- i t- i made a menchi post about this but these are this is one of the hardships that i experienced during my zinokuni thing is um yeah the the things happening back in south elysium like shit yeah of course there's something back in south elysium i'm not from here i don't live here i'm not completely here i'm just here for the little bit then also social anxiety right at the same time so i was there just looking at the bridge enjoying enjoying the breeze and enjoying the view then everybody was talking everybody was mm, okay i messed it up whatever crap then i saw altair altair went to the even to my left side like even further even further and he was alone there and he was just looking at the bridge he was also kind of maybe intro- introspective at the moment <clears throat> and we, we were just next to each other not really talking and we were just there having our own little moment um and when i saw altair I was like you know maybe maybe it's okay to just you know if you if you don't really feel like engaging 
and talk when you don't feel like it. Maybe it's just okay to just, you know, be alone and stare, <laughs> stare into the distance. Yeah, and I saw Altair there on the side, and I really wanted to talk to him, but again, I didn't know what to say. I was, ah, I was not, my mood was a little bit low, and I felt like I was getting sick at this point too. Remember, I just came from the Taylor Swift concert, so, <laughs> so I was like, oh crap, is this the time that I'm gonna get sick? Is this the time that I'm gonna get sick? Is this it? So. But anyway, just Altair's presence to the left being alone as well just, you know, kind of comforted me in some way. Um, but then Gerard. But then Gerard came in and talked to him and they had their own moment together. But so I was still alone at that moment. And they had their little talk. I remember I remember still hearing Gerard is like, I know what you feel. I was there before. <laughs> Something like that, right? He did a weird in-character kind of thing to Altair at the start. But eventually it became like a normal, a normal moment. <clears throat> so I was still there alone. Everybody was talking about something. You know, Gibby and some of the staff were talking about moving to Japan at some point, how how it's done, what the process is, and stuff like that. But then I think I'm not sure if this is real or not, but I feel like Toramane and Shikamane might have noticed that, that I was just alone. And so they approached me and talked to me. And I was like, and that's the thing. If you talk to me, easy peasy, I'll be there. I'll be there a hundred percent. But it's hard for me to approach somebody to actually start like a conversation. And so they approached me, and I was able to get to know Toramane a little bit more. Uh, Shikamane, I talked to a little bit more. Also a fan of Taylor Swift. So we talked about that and talked about you know being here in Japan and everything. It was great. <clears throat> then eventually. You know, that was like the tail end of that moment in the bridge. And we walked home. Yeah, we walked home. And yeah. So, like I said, one of the biggest things I want to accomplish, I want to I wanna go back next year and be a different person. I want to be, I want to be like, you know, like Axel. Maybe not exactly like Axel, but... Axel was just Axel was literally just enjoying his time there talking to everybody um he even talked to me at some point like when we were just going down going down the going down the escalator and he just randomly approached me hey blah, 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 blah. Said, yeah yeah cool, cool cool then I remember I remember in the buffet as well because we had separate tables we had separate tables right and Gibby, Gerard, and the others were in one table, and the others were the Haka, and everyone else was in the other table. And I found myself in a table with Ruse and mostly Manisans and Staff Sons. And Staff stun Sons, right? <clears throat> so, you know, I was in a position where I guess our table was a little bit, it wasn't full, it wasn't a full wasn't as full as the others and wasn't as noisy I guess as the others but it was still noisy the ruse was there right but from the beginning from the beginning Axel was like oh wait wait maybe oh that table looks a little bit lonely there then he was like he wanted to move tables or something like something like that he noticed it immediately oh that table's a little bit lonely but then the man said no 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 it's because these seats are still reserved for the staff this, the other staff that are coming Itself. Because I think we, it was just me, Ruse, my money, and my money. It was just three of us in the table because the others haven't joined us yet. So, yeah, and Axel, oh, that table looks a little bit lonely and stuff. And he moved to our table for a bit to talk to us. Then, even, you know, even at the end of the night, he, he'd still move to our table to talk as well. Just because it's not as full as, as the others, right? How to be like Axel, man? How to be like Axel? <sighs> but yeah, I guess it's just, it's just, it just fully, you know, brings home the point that, you know, each of us are different. Each of us have different, like, social, uh, social capacities, social batteries and everything. And I wish, I wish to be better in that regard, you know? 
Force should be better. Um, just because it's one of the things I've always struggled with, you know? I've struggled so much with that through the years. And I think also, you know, for you guys who struggle the same way, I want to be... I want to be better for you guys as well, you know? So that maybe you guys can also break out of your shell, you know, stuff like that. <sighs> but yeah, I want to come back next year and be a bit different. Be a bit different. Be more assertive, you know? Uh, be more confident. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, one step at a time, maybe one day. Hey, I also saw like Miyabi, was it wasn't Miyabi or Izuru who commented that they were in a group with us with Armis boys and they were like they were they didn't know what to do. Like what what will we do in this situation? Um And I really wanted to talk to them. I really wanted to interact with them. But again, you know, I'm shy. It's hard. But maybe next year. Maybe next year. <clears> hmm. <throat> <laughs> uh, so that's it for all the member submitted questions. However, can I still can I, <laughs> can I still talk about everything else for the next few? Okay, uh, maybe. Um. Okay, let's talk more about the next day, day two. Day two. What was day two anyway? Oh, day two was. Day two. Hmm. Day two was the thing. <laughs> was the Monster Hunter Cafe. Monster Hunter Cafe. Um, we went to Akihabara. I think that's in Akihabara, right? That's also the first coffee that I bought. I w went to the combini for the first time. And bought coffee. It was great. And that's when I realized that if you have like a 10,000 yen bill, you can just put it in the machine and the machine will just dispense whatever change you 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 need. Yeah. The heck? Here in South Elysium, here in South Elysium, if they don't have change to give you, they're gonna get mad at you. It's your fault that they don't have change. That's a system here. But there, the machine is like, doo -doo -doo -doo, here's your change, right? <laughs> Here, it's your fault. When they don't have change to give you, they'll look at you in the eye, they, their eyebrows will be like this. Then they're like, well, I can smaller bill. Don't you have a smaller bill? It's like, oh, uh, I'm sorry, I don't. <laughs> they... <laughs> the tongue clicking too, yeah. <laughs> the tisk. <laughs> uh, then they make a big show. They make a big show out of going into their coffers to get more coins and stuff. They're banging the coffer door. <clears throat> They're opening with a key. <sighs> the big sigh. Ah, <sighs> uh, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. But there in Zinokuni, just put the freaking thing in the machine. AI, machine learning. I'm a computer. I do things. I compute numbers. Here's your change. And there's like a section for you to get your bills and to get your coins. <clears throat> and here's one thing I hate so much is trying to figure out how many coins. Like for example, if you pay for something, if you pay for something, you, you, let's say you give a hundred, a hundred, a hundred South Elysian bill, and they're like, "Do you have two, two more coins?" Then you're like, uh, uh, no, I don't. That, 
Because they want to give you like a full bill or something. So they they ask for extra money from you, like extra coins or something. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. Baka may dos kayo. Yeah, exactly. Maybe you have two extra South Elysian coins. Or five or seven. Like a weird number, usually. <laughs> yeah, they get mad at you for not having those two extra coins. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Something like that. <clears throat> but yeah, day two, bought my first coffee, took some pictures. I have a bunch of pictures of the city, of the infrastructure and everything. It was great. We went to the Monster Hunter Cafe. We met Ruse in, like, we met, Ruse was in front of the Monster Hunter Cafe. And that's when I first saw, I mean, I mean, walking through Akihabara, so many, so many people. So many people. <laughs> it was funny. So it was funny. We were walking, me and Gerard, and every, everyone were walking. Armis were walking. Then we saw a bunch of birds, like pigeons. And Gerard went up to the pigeons and they like and like he put his arms out. Oh yeah, no no. There's there's more. Before that, we stopped. We went to a train. We stopped. We stopped at the station. And we went to Yanaklo. Yanaklo. Yanaklo had like a bunch of different floors. That five floors, Yanaklo, right? And I helped Gerard find a coat because he needed a coat. So we looked around Yanaklo, um, and I, I spotted uh, they, he and Gibby were looking around. I was on my own. I was looking for like something to buy, like a nice thing to buy. I was actually looking for a backpack because I needed a backpack for my laptop when I bring it around. So I got a nice backpack. Then Gibby and Gerard were just walking around Yanaklo and they couldn't find a coat. And I was like, what? I found I found a coat within five seconds within this uh, floor. And I showed them the coat. I'm like, ooh. Doo -doo -doo. And he, he got the coat and everything. And it was self-checkout. It was a self-checkout Yanaklo. What the heck? Damn, I love it here. I love it there in Zinokuni. Self-checkout. You go to machine, you go to machine, you put your clothes in there, you put your card, doot doot, then you're done. Then there's an option if you want a bag, you, yeah, a bag, extra charge for a bag, whatever. Doot doot. Then for the bag, there's like a little cabinet there, a little, little drawer or whatever, cupboard, I don't know what it's called. And you just get your bag, get a bag there, put the, put your things in a bag. Yeah. So. Oh, it just makes sense. It just makes sense that you just there's there's like, there were like 10, 10 self checkout points. You know, you know in South Elysium, in South Elysium there are like three, three cashiers, three sections for a cashier to be, and only one of them is manned. Why is that? They're gonna be like five cashiers, five places that you can pay, you can buy your your clothes, but only one of them is manned. Why? The same for the airport. In the airport, there are like twenty, there are like twenty booths for immigration, but there's only one. There's only one employee there. What's going on? <laughs> Where are the people? Uh, and <laughs> I'm sorry, South Elysium. I live here. That's why I know. That's why I know everything. I know everything. In South Elysium, they also have this. My God, they also have this obsession with closing off everything. Like you can't go through this, you can't go through the street. You can't use the street. You can't, you can't go through here. No. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't stay there. You can't go through this passage. You can't go through, through this more convenient passage. It's, it's, it's locked. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on here. But in Zinokuni, it feels like everything is open. It's like it feels like you can go anywhere. It feels like everywhere there's a nice place to go to. <laughs> 
So we did the self checkout thing, and um, freaking Gerard put his put his because he bought the coat right. He had a jacket. He had a little jacket, but he wanted to use the coat. So he he removed his jacket and put his jacket in my bag, and then put on his coat that he just bought. <laughs> So I had his jacket in my bag, in my shopping bag, right? He didn't even, he didn't buy his own shopping bag. He just used my shopping bag, which is great for the environment, you know? So anyway, we were at the pigeon, we were at the pigeon and Gerard was like, he had his hands out, uh, motioning the pigeons to come to me, come to me. And some pigeons were, were indeed coming to him, right? They weren't coming to him. Then... <laughs> I took his jacket out and I gave it to the pigeon. <laughs> I was offering it to the pigeon. <laughs> took his jacket out. Here, pigeon, get this, bite this, eat this. <laughs> it's like, no, Gagu. <laughs> so yeah, that was that was a little pigeon story. <laughs> Just a little pigeon story. Then we walked. We walked a little bit further. <laughs> Gagu. <laughs> we walked a little bit further. Then I saw like two pandas. I saw a sculpture of two pandas, and I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna take a picture of that. That's so cute." I took a picture of it, and Shikamani is like, "Do you guys want to take a picture with those pandas?" And we were like, "Heck yeah!" And so three of us took a picture of the pandas. <laughs> And Shikamano was taking a picture. I was like, damn, Shikamano is her mom. It was me, Gerard, and Gold Bullet there. It was Mark. I was with Mark and Garf. <laughs> Shikamano took a picture. What? And I think that's our only picture together, honestly. I think that's our only, like, you know, only posed, posed group picture that we have. Um, Armis. Armish. I don't think I have a picture with Luz Viminda though. So yeah, it was Shika Mother. Shika Mother. So we moved, we moved, we walked, we walked. Uh your place looks dangerous. <laughs> uh we walked, 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 walked. Then we finally got to Akihabara. Akihabara, I, my mind was blown. Everyone was in their drip. Everyone was cool looking. Everyone looked like People were just casually wearing things I only see in anime. The maid outfits. There were like, there were like girls inviting you to the to the maid cafes and everything. Uh, what? Um, and they were just there. They were just in their maid outfits and everything. Then there were people with their cool freaking techwear drip. They were in the techwear. Mm, everybody had their long coats. There were Mario Kart, Mario Kart carts on the street. Um. So many pockets, so many pockets. So many belts like hanging from their clothes. So many belts and chains hanging from their jackets or their pants or their whatever. Right? Cool things, cool things. I could never dress like that. Maybe. I only dress like this. I only dress formally. I don't know. Would I look good in tech wear? I don't know. I don't think that's my scene. I'm more of a formal opera theater kind of guy um. <clears throat> uh, then cyberpunk 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 tavi au you're right you're right you're in tech wear um yeah <laughs> too hot in south elysium then we finally reached the monster hunter cafe and that's when i first saw my first the first merch i've ever seen of final fantasy 14 shadowbringers it was so cool, I wanted it. And we edited the Monster Hunter Cafe. I got the... I got the... Salmon... Smoked Salmon... Carpaccio... Carpaccio thing. Food. Then I also got the Almadron drink. It was like a... It was like a mud... Float... Drink. That had like a yuzu, yuzu sauce drizzle on top of the ice cream. It was so good. 
I had the dango. I had the two pieces of dango. Um, Ruse had his freaking bowl of sake. It was an actual bowl, like a big bowl of sake with some flowers, flower petals in it. Uh, dango. Yeah, I had the I had the Monster Hunter dango. Two pieces of two pieces of it. It was great. Um, the top dango were kind of mad. They had a mad expression at, at the top. <clears throat> then. Uh, that's also when I first met when I first met Baby Bird Mane. Also, my Mane, my Mane is dripped AF. My Mane, my Mane is like the most fashionable person, fashionable person I've ever met in my life. Like more fashionable than anyone I've ever even seen on the streets. Uh, my mana was in like six inch heels, you know? So fashionable. What the heck? My mana is so cool. Baby Bird mana is fashionable as well. Shikamana is fashionable as well. What the heck is going on? Everybody is fashionable. Oh, also, also Gorimane. <laughs> yeah, we've been with Gorimane a lot during the trip. Actually, actually got to meet Gorimane, the legendary Gorimane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Oh, you know what I was wearing then? <laughs> because here's the thing. Because I had this moment where I couldn't use my steamer to iron my clothes, right? So I was like, crap, I can't wear my clothes. They're not ironed. <laughs> Even Shikamane was like, you're so... I don't iron my clothes. <laughs> don't You don't need to iron your clothes. It's fine. I was like, no, no, I need to iron my clothes. Um. So I wore my, my Taylor Swift hoodie. <laughs> I was so happy though. I wore my Taylor Swift hoodie. The gray one. The gray one. And uh, you know, the man is all called all noticed. Oh, that's so cute. You're wearing the Taylor Swift hoodie. Of course I am. So I wore the hoodie. I was so comfy in that hoodie. Ah, oh, so good. Thank you. You know the good thing about the Taylor Swift hoodie is that the bottom part you know how jackets, I mean, her hoodies and stuff like that, the bottom part kind of constricts, kind of is kind of, they have a garter or something like that and they constrict the bottom part. But Taylor Swift, fashionable queen, they have the thing where the bottom part isn't, is just loose. Yeah. So it looks like, so it looks like, it kind of looks like an over, oversized hoodie. Something like that. <clears throat> I saw somewhere like a TikTok that that's a secret for the oversized hoodie to look good. It's the bottom part needs to be the loose kind of thing. The bottom part needs to be loose. Because otherwise, if it constricts, if it constricts like in the bottom part, then it's like, what? Kind of looks weird. So yeah, it's great. I love it. I love it so much. Um, it's actually hard to find those kind of hoodies for me. I wouldn't wear a hoodie anyway in South Elysium. Heck no. So, I have that. Uh, Monster Hunter Cafe was great. There were like four PlayStation 4s stationed there that you can just play. However, those those four PlayStation 4s are like the dustiest and most and the loudest PlayStation 4s I've ever heard in my life. They were like jet engines. They were like, <laughs> and Gerard was like, let's play. Let's play. And we were like, no, Gerard, no. We're not gonna we're not gonna spend 40 minutes playing on a mission. <laughs> but there was a lot of, there were a lot of cool things there, were like big life-size swords. There's a big hammer. There's a big bow and arrow. Everything. It was so cool. It was so cool. <laughs> he wanted to play Monster and I'm like, what? No 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 no. 
vetoed. Vetoed. Then we, then we also got, then they also served us like a cake, a cake that was like, welcome to Japan. I thought that was pretty cool. It was pretty nice. They served us like, they served us this little snack in the beginning that I don't know what it was. It was very tough. It was very tough. It was a very tough snack. It tasted like squid. It was good though. It was good though. Um, what else happened in Monster Hunter Cafe? That happened in the Monster Hunter Cafe. And then after that, oh yeah, after that, we went to the Koto, Kotobukiya. Kotobukiya? Kotobukiyo? Or something? <clears throat> um, where all the merch was. And that's when I first scouted like all the merch that I was gonna buy. I saw I saw the Kingdom Hearts merch. I saw the I saw the Final Fantasy VII merch. I saw the near automata, near replicant merch. I saw all of that. I was like scouting, scouting, seeing everything. Um, they they were really interested in the Monster Hunter merch, and I think Ruse bought like a gotcha, a Monster Hunter gotcha thing box for the Monster Hunter. Oh, Gerard, I I don't know what happened, but. We we're supposed to go. We, we were we were done. We were done with the Kotobukiya, right? We went to all the floors. Me and Gibby went to all the floors. It was cool. Then we were done. We were just waiting for Gerard. Um, and I think Gerard like broke a machine or something. I'm not I'm not quite sure. He's he's gonna he's gonna tell a story about that probably in the future. But he broke like a machine. I don't know what kind of I don't know what machine he broke, like a cashier or something. I don't know, or a gotcha machine. So we were waiting for him for like I don't know, fifteen minutes. Yeah, he. I don't know. <laughs> what can you break? Um. So while that was happening, we're like, oh, should we just leave Gerard and go to the to the place where you can do the crane games? And uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. But Gerard was able to finish whatever he was what caused the delay. And I don't know, I don't know what he broke though. He, he, go to his stream tomorrow and ask him what the heck was that? What did he break? And so we walked a little bit more and we went to the crane game place. And the crane game place, pretty great. Gerard won a lot of things. Gerard won a lot of things, but he's gonna tell that to you. He's gonna tell you what all the things he won. Um, the Madisons were also so fun because you know their extra coins. They were giving it to Gerard. We're like, you're almost there. Here, more coins. Here's more coins. Here are all the coins I have. Gorimana gave all her, all her coins, everything. You know, and yeah, he won things. He just has to tell you what they are. So we went. Then we went a few, a few stairs up. Then when we got up to like a few more stairs a few more stairs <laughs> suddenly you hear a bunch of banging not banging like right oh no oh no the sweaty gamers are here the sweaty gamers are here and we got up and all the rhythm gamers were there they were banging on the big drums they were like they were doing these movements in the air and me and Ruzwa, oh, let's get out of here. No, 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 no. We're in the wrong place. We're in the wrong place. Let's get out of here. We do not belong here. <laughs> yeah. Every the, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Everyone is, was, was playing a rhythm game. Some kind of rhythm game. So many rhythm games. And they're all good. <laughs> Time to get out. Time to get out. And so we got out. We finished our crane game stuff. I wasn't able to get any crane game things. Just because I didn't have a lot of coins, like a hundred, hundred yen coins. I had, I had a bunch of ones. I had a bunch of ones, had a bunch of fives. I don't know what's going on. Tens. Not a lot of hundreds though. Um. Then after that, it was time for me to go to the, uh, to Square Enix Cafe. And it was funny because, um, at this point, we're, we're going to separate, right? We're going to separate. Now, Ruse, Gibby, and Gerard, they they wanted to go home. They wanted to go back to the hotel, right? Time to go back to the hotel. And Shikamane was like, okay, 
I'm not gonna go with you to the hotel. I have some place else to go. So, don't get lost, three of you. Just go to the train and go back home to the hotel. Use Google Maps. And Ruse was like, "Okay, I got the Google Maps and everything. Yeah, he, he, he has the Google Maps." Woo. And Shikamani is like, "No, Ruse, don't use your Google Maps. Have Gerard use his Google, Google Maps, so he will know how to use, so he know how will you know how to find his way if he gets lost." So he can get used to using the maps and everything, and using the train and stuff like that. And so they they disappeared in the crowd, and it was Gerard that was. <laughs> Ruse had his phone as a backup, but Gerard was looking at his phone, trying to find where to go next. <laughs> and Shikaman is like, Gerard needs this, so when he's alone, he can find his way home. Wink, wink. We know how that went. We know how that went. <laughs> then me and Mane, me and my Mane, <clears throat> went to. We walked. We walked a lot to the train station. Um, Ma Mane-san took me to like the the square and the other Square Enix cafe. There's like a Square Enix cafe near the near the train station, and he says that it takes it's a little bit harder to date to get like a booking there. But we went there. I looked at all the merch and everything. Cool. Then also I needed like an adapter. I needed an adapter for my laptop because I couldn't charge it. So we went to the Yoda Yodabashi Akiba, Yodabashi Akiba store, and that was like a ten floor store of everything. How? Ten floors of everything that you need in your life, and it's not like these floors are small. These floors are really, really wide. The heck? It's either ten floors or nine floors, or maybe eight floors. I don't know. I know one of the higher floors is like Yanaklo again, Yanaklo and another other clothing brands. And for the first few few stores, it's like tech, tech, electronics. Then at one point, it becomes like cosmetics, snacks. You know. So. We went there and we tried to look for an adapter. And you know what was surprising? It was harder than expected to look for an adapter from a South Elysium plug to a two-prong plug. So me and Mani were confused. Where are these adapters? Huh? Where are these adapters? And so good thing my Mane was with me because they were the one that talked to the people, to the staff. And the staff was like. Oh, that's in the foreign section, kind of like the foreigner section, travel section, you know, stuff like that. It's like, oh, makes sense. They're like, go to the place with a bunch of、uh, luggage suitcases. Yeah, you can find those plugs there. Yeah, because yeah, because if you're gonna travel, you're gonna need these adapters. For your things, for your plugs, I don't know why it's not just in the general plug area. <laughs> these these foreign adapters are in their own area. So we went there, and I was able able to get two two adapters, two different ones for different plugs. It was great, it was great. But you know what I loved so much there is it's been so long since I've seen a store. Of like gaming stuff, like just games. There was a whole section for PlayStation, a whole section for Nintendo, and then sections for PC stuff for monitors and everything. And in all their monitors, all monitors and all TVs, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth on the telly. It was so nice. Last time I saw something like that is in North Elysium. Because you know, you know the stores here in South Elysium, <laughs> the gaming stores in South Elysium. They're like, they're like the size of a small hotel room, and it's just, <laughs> it's, just it's just terrible to be in those places. They're very, very tight. But there, it's like 
big swaths of area for PlayStation. There's there's a little there's a little little booth for Xbox. <laughs> there's like a little there's a, like a little shelf for Xbox. Then over in the distance, there's like twice the size of PlayStation Nintendo. If I could, I could also try the freaking Apple Vision thing. The Apple goggles thing, but I was shy. I didn't want to talk to I didn't want to talk in Japanese. <laughs> I wanted to try it though. Um, but I, maybe next time, maybe next time. I was just happy. I was just happy looking at, you know, all the displays for Stellar Blade, for Rise of the Ronin, for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. You know, all that stuff. It was just it was just nice to see. There. Damn. I love it so much there. So I got everything. Then we went to the Square Enix Cafe. And that's where that's when I met Fleon. And Fleon and his Manasan were outside the Square Enix Cafe. Boy oh boy, we walked a lot. We walked a lot to get there. And Manasan was like, I'm sorry, but we're gonna need to walk through the red light district. And we walked through the red light district. Alright. And there weren't any red lights because it was still it was still pretty bright. And Manisan was like, uh, "This is probably the more a more dangerous place in Japan, but you know it's not really dangerous. It's like it's just the most one of the more dangerous places." I'm like, "Okay, I get it. I get it. You know, as compared to like here." <laughs> so I saw I saw the red light district. I saw all the images. There were so there were really big images of beautiful people you know really big images um yeah big big of beautiful and handsome people um big but no one no one really no one really talked to me I mean propositioned I guess no one really um but it was still nice to see it was still nice to see um, it was very quiet. It was very quiet there. There weren't a lot of people there. Like there were so many people in the more in the than in the green light district. But then suddenly we enter the red light district. There's like very few people. So <laughs> big donk donk donkers. <laughs> uh, so we went through there, but we were able to get to the Square Enix Cafe, and I met Flyon and his Manisan. <clears throat> um. First thing Flan did, hug me. A very strong hug. Very strong. We were, we we're like the same height, but he's like, ah! he's really strong. Um, then we went inside. We went inside and Flan, super, super easy to talk to. What the heck? It's, ah! man. I wonder if I'm easy to talk to. I don't know. Probably not. Probably not. But why? <laughs> it's like you talk to Flayon, he listens. He knows everything you're saying. He talks back, you talk back. You just talk and talk and talk and, you know. You talk. Bunch of food. Suddenly, we talk about the food. We talk about all the things in Final Fantasy. We talk about tales at some point. Um, Cardio, yeah. Mm. Then after the food, oh, I ordered the Tifa drink and Flan ordered the Sephiroth drink. But Sephiroth, Sephiroth's drink was really small. It was it was just one gulp for Flayon. <laughs> it's one gulp for Flayon, and I was just enjoying my Tifa drink. Mm. Best girl Tifa, right? Then, then it was two straws, so I had Flay. I gave Flayon the other straw. For him to drink, to try my Tifa drink, and so he he tried it. Um, we shared straws, ha! Huh. Take that, Maki runes. <laughs> we shared straws, right? Then he was like, "Oh, this drink is so good! Wow, I want that drink." And then <laughs> spit swap. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really. I'm not like a germaphobe or something like that. So even if you drink from my straw, or whatever, I'm fine with it. 
just don't lick my ice cream. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> just don't lick my ice cream. I'm also not gonna chew the gum that you chewed, okay? You know, it's just, it's just drinks, whatever, right? So, <laughs> so, Flan was like, I know I ordered one drink, but I'm gonna order that. And he, and he ordered the Tifa drink as well. And he enjoyed it. <laughs> Wait, that's indirect kiss? <laughs> no sharing of food like Mother Bird. Yeah, no, none of that. <laughs> so he got a Tifa drink. And actually, Flayon treated, treated us to that meal. In the Square Enix Cafe. What a great senpai, right? What a great senpai. Damn, all my senpais are great. <clears throat> so out of yeah hmm <clears throat> he's paying the kawaii tax <laughs> treated me to the square enix cafe and the thing about the square enix cafe is that um is that the food there is expensive yeah haka and haka gave me an ice cream see they're so good so Al Altair and Axel for the hot pot. I don't know if Axel traded, but you know, he was he organized that. So Altair Axel Hot Pot, Play on Square Enix Cafe, Bonzo in Haka, ice cream, ice cream in a jelly jelly container, right? So the only the only people left that haven't treated me are Um Shinri. And Betel! <laughs> I'm gonna cash in next time. Yeah! Yeah! The Kohai tax. <laughs> next year, I hope I don't have Kohai. So I can get... So, so that's all profit for me. <laughs> Because if next year I have Kohai, then damn! It's gonna balance out! It's gonna balance out! Next year, no Kohai, so it's 100% profit. There's no Kohai to buy food for. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. <clears throat> but thank you, thank you, my senpais, for all the, all the treats. You gave us. So we finished with the meal. Then we went to all the merch. We looked at all the merch and stuff. And we went to... They had this... We had this section at the back that's like... The walls are painted black. But there's like displays of like every play art. I don't know if it's play arts or something like that. Different action figures. Of like Final Fantasy 7. Everything. All the Final Fantasies. Even Stranger of Paradise. Even like... Kingdom Hearts. There was a robot there at some point as well. There was a big one is to one replica of the Buster Sword, of the Cloud Buster Sword. Then in the middle, <clears throat> yeah, even chaos, yes. Then in the middle, there was like a crystal, red crystal hanging in the air. Then there was water falling from the ceiling, right? But because the lights were strobing in a specific way, it looked like the water was going up instead. Instead of falling. Mm, that was fun. That was fun. Yeah, it's like the water was moving upwards. Yes. Was there any FF trading cards? I think there were. There were some cards there, I think. Also some pins. Little stuff like that. I wanted the stuffed toys. What I, I wanted the sing... There was one singular plushie of Zidane. From Final Fantasy IX. I thought I was going to be able to find that in elsewhere in Akihabara, but apparently not. It's just in that specific Square Enix cafe, which is really far. Damn it. <laughs> Could have bought that. Uh, Twelwi? No, there was there was no Twelwi, I believe. Yeah, it's mostly Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts in that place. So that was a that was a nice little thing. Um. Nice little date between me and Flayon. Uh, but because of that, I wasn't able to meet Axel when Gerard met Axel. Um, 
So yeah. Yeah, Gerard met Axel during that time while I was out with Flayot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So when I came when I came home, I was like, boys, I'm home. Uh is there anything you guys want to do? Then Gibby is like, I'm actually I actually want to go out for a walk. Um tonight. And I'm like, cool, I'm I'ma join, I'ma join. And then Gerard was also like, yeah, I'm gonna join as well. Then Gerard was wearing his freaking hotel pajamas. <laughs> he was like, okay, I'm gonna go out in my pambahai. So he was he was in his hotel pajamas and his crocs. <laughs> he was in his crocs. So that was when Gibby uh Gibby all three of us tried to find a family mart <laughs> but we got lost we we're like what why is there no family mart here this was a street there was supposed to be a family mart where is it <laughs> in the cold yeah yeah crocs in the yeah in his thin ass hotel pajamas <laughs> So we were out. We were like, where the heck is a family mart? Where's a 7-Eleven? Then we accidentally um, happened upon a, a 7-Eleven. Gibby was like, I'm not going to use Google Maps. I know where it is. I'm, I just memorized the landmarks. I know where the landmarks are. I know where it is. But they're like, where are we? Where are we? We're lost. So Elsa dripped out and they, yeah, yeah. He's in his Pambahai core. <laughs> <laughs> I was just in my Taylor Swift though, in my Taylor Swift hoodie. Um so yeah. So we went, we found a family mart and we bought some bought some food. Um What what did what did I get? I kind of forgot. Yeah, I I think I just just got an onigiri. Just because I really wanted to try some onigiri. Oh, I got a gigantic crab meat stick. It was a gigantic crab meat stick. The heck? It was like the size of my hand. I ate that. It was really good. It's just imitation crab meat. I don't care if you call it imitation crab meat. Whatever that is, I love it. Uh, onigiri was really good too. Um, pudding. I think Gerard bought pudding. And he ate it inside the 7 Eleven. Mm. Then, yeah, after that, we were like, let's go to a park. And so we, we walked to a park that Gibby was able to go to. And then, yeah, that's when we were almost killed by a freaking guy with a red lightsaber. I'm not even sure if this is day two or day three, but anyway, it's just one of those days. <laughs> Guy with a red lightsaber we went around a park. We found, I already told the story, we found, a, we found a faucet that spurts water straight up in a 90 degree angle. And so Gibby and Gerard put their mouths in, on top of this faucet and just opened the faucet. I don't think they were even able to drink. I don't think that even was a faucet for you to drink in. I think that was just a freaking fountain that might have just been a fountain so they did that and this this park by the way this side of the park was there were no lights it was very scary um i even have videos of us walking there <laughs> so they drank from a fountain i love it i love it i didn't drink from that fountain no way you're not gonna catch me drinking from a fountain <laughs> And so we walked further in to where there were more lights. We saw a a Sith who almost killed us twice. Then we got to a playground. In that playground, there was a slide. Gerard went up the slide, <laughs> went up the slide, then slid down. Gibby was able to take a perfect picture with a motion blur of Gerard sliding down the slide with his hands up, with his hands up. Then he reached the ground and he sat on the concrete floor straight on his butt and he was like ah <laughs> yeah in his pajamas yeah 
<laughs> draw that. Draw that. Maybe I could do a little paint here of what it looks like. Now, nah, basically the side the side view of the the slide. Then just imagine Gerard going down the slide with his two hands up with motion blur. In Crocs and in his white hotel pajamas that were only up to like a little past the knee. Yeah, a little past the knee. And he he has a hoodie on top. <laughs> and so after that, we went back, we went back and Gerard did the thing where he was like, I'm not going to use Google Maps. I'm going to go back. We're going to go back. I'm going to get us to the hotel. And we took like a longer route to the hotel. Um, we just, that's just the way he wanted to go. Just a longer route to the hotel. And that officially ends day two. Bruh. That's day two. However, I think we need, I think we need to move day three, four, five, six to another day. <laughs> Or else this is gonna be this is gonna be really it's gonna be really long and honestly my throat is like Egh. my throat is is losing it. So you know what maybe I'll maybe tonight I'll also make a little a little bit more notes about day three, four, five, six, so I can so we can be more structured, so I can don't forget. Part two when? <laughs> Damn. I already have my schedule, but we'll see. We'll see! We'll see. So, so this is why Battle has like four four episodes of his Xenocunian adventure out. And what's crazy is that Battle's Xenocunian adventures will go on and on as long as he's there. Yeah, Gorilla Octox. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you get your JP visa? Oh. Yeah, cover cover had to deliver a bunch of documents. Wait, I think I told the story already. Cover delivered like a bunch of documents for me to show, like the visa place. <clears throat> but here's the thing: the documents arrived in South Elysium on February 14. February 14. It was in already South Elysium. But South Elysium didn't de didn't deliver it until one week after I got my visa. <laughs> like what the heck? The heck? Gerard got his documents just fine. Like Gerard got his documents the day after it arrived here in South Elysium. But for some reason, mine was stuck. Wherever it was, it was stuck. They weren't delivering it. So I had to, I really, so my, the, so my process of getting a visa was very, very tight. And that's why I almost missed Taylor Swift. It's because if the visa wasn't processed within five days, within five days, then I wouldn't be able to get my passport. Then I wouldn't be able to travel to... To Singapore but fortunately the visa was processed within like four days three four days yeah <clears throat> and there's the thing months before me and Gerard were talking about this is that uh even even Ruse Ruse didn't want to believe that nah it's your documents are gonna come easy peasy and we were like you don't know South Elysium <laughs> You don't know South Elysium. I'm confident that Xenokuni will be able to get my papers from Xenokuni to South Elysium in the fastest time possible. I'm confident about that. But from South Elysium to my house? Ha! You cannot trust anything here. And that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> uh, to Malaysia I actually want to go to Malaysia one, at one point I want to go to all the SEA countries and see what's up definitely <clears throat> is it really South Elysium if your stuff doesn't get 
yeah. Yeah. Every time I travel, I fear for my for my luggage, you know? I feel like eventually the RNG of lost luggage is gonna is gonna haunt me at one point. It's gonna get to me at some point. Reminds me when I was when I was a kid and my mother bought like a Gundam on a website. And it never arrived. Now I don't know if my mother actually bought the Gundam or looked or made it look like she bought the Gundam. But it never arrived. That's all I remember. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> that was a, I was like how many years old? Nine? Ten? <laughs> Twenty-three, I mean. Twenty-three? Uh, Abai has a tracking number. <laughs> this also has a tracking number, and it, it it tracked it all right. It tracked it all right. It tracked it. It was in the post office or something for many many days. <laughs> it tracked it. Exactly. It was there, just there for many many days. <laughs> so yeah. It's time to reveal my next schedule. Schedule for this week. Now, knowing what we know that I wasn't able to talk all er, talk about everything about Xenokuni, we might have some Gorilla Ock talks here and there. I'll see. I'll see. I'll be able I will give a many hours notice though before before everything. Before I do it. So, you get it's not going to be super short notice like, "Hey, I'm going to stream right now in 10 minutes." No, no, no. no. So here we go. Tomorrow is gonna be. <laughs> so that's March 2024. Also, this art, thank you to Star for this amazing art. You know what this art is? You can see it already. You can see it. It's there. So, first day, Monday, is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, finally. Finally, we're gonna be start. We're gonna start playing. We're gonna go back to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Thank you. Thank. You. I don't know if it's gonna be endurance. I don't know. I don't think it's gonna be endurance, but it's gonna be long. It's gonna be long. It's not gonna be like a twelve-hour thing. It's not gonna be twelve hours or whatever anymore because I'm. I don't really have a deadline. To I don't have like a. I'm gonna go to Japan. <laughs> so I need to finish it. So we're just gonna take. We're just gonna take our time. With seven rebirth so and on tuesday it's gonna be what is tuesday oh yeah tuesday is gonna be the extended like the t3 the, the menshi xenokuni plus it's like the extra the extra episode of xenokuni because it's gonna be pictures um now here's the thing this is a T3 stream just because part of the T3 perks is access to my camera. Camera roll. Um, so, you know, so that's why it's going to be a T3 stream because it's going to have, it's, I'm going to show IRL pictures of my pictures that I took in Japan and pictures of my merch and also just a little, little, little zatsu regarding the things that I bought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, then, in the evening of that day, it's gonna be a collab with me, Fleon, Girl, DM, and Mary. What it's gonna be though, we'll see. Actually, this is still a tentative schedule. <laughs> this is still a tentative schedule, so we'll see if it continues, but I think it will. I think it will. But it's gonna involve Girl, DM, and Mary. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Next up for Wednesday, it's gonna be... Whoa! Nothing. It's rest day. Rest day for Wednesday. <laughs> hey, Kai, thank you for joining the Shadow Puppet. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> then... Next Thursday. Wait, what's Thursday? Ha! A difficult game about climbing vibrato challenge. Yeah! Remember I was supposed to do a Vibrato Jump King challenge? 
Well, it's changed. I saw there were some new perms. There were some new perms. I, I looked up a perms list and I was like, what is this game? Then, <laughs> what? This looks like a certain other game that I know. Hey, Grace, thanks so much for joining the Shadow Puppet. Thank you, thank you. Then, uh, the moment I saw those perms, I looked at YouTube and I saw that Kali Senpai was playing and I was like, what? And the title for a stream was like, Winnable? Or something like that? I was like, okay, let's do it. So it's gonna be Vibrato, difficult game about climbing. No Helldivers 2 yet? Nah, we... Helldivers 2, we don't have perms for it at all. Unforch, unforch. So yeah, difficult game about climbing. Then on Friday, it's gonna be... Oh yeah, it's a collab. It's like collab with School Labyrinth with Gerard. Um, <laughs> and this is the game. This is the game that Gerard paid. <laughs> instead of paying F cash, instead of paying via F cash, he was like, "I'm gonna gift you a game because I owe you money." Uh, okay, that is this. It's not even a sixty dollar game. It's not even a seventy dollar game. You know, it's not even like. Horizon Forbidden West or something. It's School Labyrinth. 200 South Elysian coins. That's like, what? 600 yen? <laughs> but thank you still though. Thank you still though, Gerard, for the gift, School Labyrinth. Hey, Becca, thanks so much for joining the Shadow Puppets. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Does you even know how to F cash cash? I don't know. I don't know if he, even, he is even keeping track. Like, he owes me 16,000 South Elysium coins. Wait, he owed me like 17k, then he bought me a dinner, a dinner meal. So now it's down to 16. And now he bought this game. So maybe it's down to 15,400 maybe? I don't know. I don't know if he's, he, he's, he's even keeping track. I'm not, I'm not keeping track. Damn, maybe I should. <laughs> uh, not South, not 16k yen, 16k yen. So that's like... Seven, six K, six K ish, six to seven K, yeah. So yeah. So next is Saturday. <laughs> of course, of course, we're back to seven rebirth. Of course, of course. Um, I'm so excited to play. What the heck? Tell us alt. Thank you for joining us. What? Thank you for joining the shadow puppets. Nani. Huh? Why not your main? Huh? Thank you for joining the Shadow Puppets. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, so here, Seven Rebirth. Then next, the last day of the week is gonna be Timestamp Alt. <laughs> next one is gonna be. Octoxin the Tavio Morning Edition again. Octoxin in the morning. May who knows? Maybe this is just gonna be Octox Xenokuni Part Three. Who knows? Who knows? I think I might do the Octox Xenokuni Part Two on Friday, like the morning of School Labyrinth, because School Labyrinth is gonna be evening. I think this is 7 p.m. South Elysian time, 8 p.m. JST. So I might do the Octox part two in the morning. And who knows, maybe this morning edition of Octox will be part three of that. And lastly, lastly, I checked the times when the other can to see if it's not shut. <laughs> really, really? Damn, circumventing my team. <laughs> so Octox morning rush edition and Guys, I did it. We did it. I'm now able to stream Final Fantasy 14 on Twitch. Yeah, before we weren't able to, but now, after some work, I can now play games on Twitch. Not just FF14, any game that I want, not really any game, most games, I can now play on Twitch. Let's go! Uh, so this this is not gonna be a long stream. I I just want to get 
my bearings back in Final Fantasy 14 again. Um, but FF14 content from now on is gonna be on Twitch. Uh, just because I don't know, I don't know. I actually feel like that. Hey, Nasu, thanks so much for joining the Shadow Puppets. I actually feel like my my um, endurance streams from now on that are not like the main like main ones like Final Fantasy, like Kingdom Hearts and stuff like that. I think I'm gonna put them maybe on Twitch. I don't know. That's just what I feel like. It's just so I can go at like 13 hours. I can do like 14 hours, you know, because Twitch doesn't have that limit. YouTube has a limit where it's just 12 hours. And honestly, when you stop the stream, it's like, eh, maybe I shouldn't continue anymore. So Twitch, I can go longer. I can just do endurance streams on Twitch and stuff like that. And it's pretty cool. So it's gonna be interactive content on Twitch and other other endurance streams, like not Final Fantasy, not Kingdom Hearts, maybe like Unicorn Overlord, maybe uh, Persona 3 Reload, where I can spend longer times playing. Where I can spend longer times playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the plan for now. We're gonna go back to Twitch, Final Fantasy 14. Still Puppet vs. Puppet also happening on Twitch sometime in the future. But yeah, that's next week's schedule. I hope you enjoy next week. Also, Nasu, thanks for joining Shadow Puppets. And Key, thank you for joining Shadow Puppets. Thank you, thank you. Please look forward to the T3 Zinokuni Pictures merch Zatsu. Um, it's gonna be fun. I'm gonna edit the pictures like tonight and see. I'm gonna blur any faces that need to be blurred, like from other people, like people in the streets, in Akihabara, or stuff like that. And yeah. But guys, and also my merch. Yeah. Merch, everything. All the merch I bought, all the merch from the Hollow Expo, and just all the other random merch, even like my own starting debut merch, I'm gonna show as well. And yeah. All right. And even snacks, maybe even snacks. Maybe even snacks. All right, guys, that's it for me. Who can we raid today? Also, we are so back. We are so back. We're so back. Oh, by the way, by the way, in case you've forgotten, in case you've forgotten or don't really know, there's this thing coming up. Nekoyashiki, welcome. Thank welcome to the Shadow Puppets. There's this thing coming up. And it's called my birthday. <laughs> my birthday is April 8th. It's coming. And you know, you know, just look out for that. Uh, it arriveth. The birthday arriveth. <laughs> you should be preparing your balls. You need to prepare your balls, all right? Make sure balls are ready. For things. <laughs> Why can't I raid Rika? Why? I have the perms, but YouTube doesn't want doesn't show. Let me refresh. Let me refresh. No, it really isn't showing up. I wish I could just like tap slash raid Rika channel. But I can't. Damn it. Um Who's coming up next? Gamma? Gamma. Is that the one where he's scared? Let me check. Let me check to be sure. He has, he has like multiple rooms. <clears throat> Gamma. Oh, the Shinkansen, Shinkansen Zero! Yeah, I wanna play that too! I wanna play that too. Okay, let's go to Gamma. Gamma uh, Senpai's stream. There we go. But. You know, because I can't raid Rika Senpai, I would also, you know, we go officially to Gamma's waiting room, but I would also like us to also go to Rika, Rika's stream. On the side, on another tab or something. All right? Rika Senpai stream, check it. 
My senpais that I saw. That's it. Uh, damn, my YouTube is friggin' loading. It's loading like a sloth right now. So let's do a manual raid to Rika, Rika Senpai. Then we just officially go to Gamma Senpai's channel <laughs> with the actual raid. Rika, Rika Senpai raid. Okay. Uh, uh, guys, but that's it for me. Thank you guys for watching. And let's see each other again and again until infinity. Oh, we are so back. We are so back. Goodbye. Just kidding. Let me control you. <laughs> yeah.